Hello, and welcome back to Bard College. Have you ever waltzed into a palace of any kind, uh, let alone to make a deal or start a fight? Um, that's what the part are you going to do? Um, so yeah, they we rejoin uh, after getting back from the fountains of creation, having freed Shibanu. Um, they have uh, reacquainted themselves with Baal Hotep and got in an audience with the Grand Sultan. Um, they have locked their friend, frenemy, friend Vida Viserion in some interplanar shackles, but have also granted her the ability to loose them, should she wish. Um, good. Right. Um, I will describe, or I, I got a better picture of the City of Brass because I didn't quite have one. Sorry, the Charcoal Palace because I didn't have one. But I'll describe it for you. Uh, I'll show you this, rather. Another mid-journey creation. Ooh. So... Uh, the Charcoal Palace uh, is uh, at the center of uh, the palatial region of the City of Brass. Um, oh. It is um, heavily... An unexpected oh. guest. Oh, do we? Yeah. What? Yeah. One second, I'll just... Moon, Moon Pie joined. What? I've kicked them. Good. Possibly by accident. <laughs> I am by. Please don't fucking come into games unannounced. Who is that person? Um, anyhow, um, the Charcoal Palace is at the centre of uh, this uh, really exclusive and heavily uh, reinforced area of the city of brass. Um, the buildings are thousands of one thousands of years old. It as they're um, impossible in terms of some of their architecture, um, made of substances that no rational or sane architect from the material plane would construct buildings from sheets of charcoal, twisted brass, lava, fire, steam, all coalescing in this kind of uh, beautiful convergence of power and fire. Um, you are making your way from the outer gate in the company of Balhotep. He uh, is walking maybe 20 paces behind you, directing you. Um, who has got the highest passive perception? Is it Tilly or Mir or Jacob Tilly? It's Jack. Okay, Tilly. It's, J it's Jack. Oh, is it Jack? Jack? Sorry. I was pointing okay. up because I see Gareth okay. above me. In the... Sorry. Um, okay, Jacob, you can make me a perception check. Okay. With a 31, you scan the denizens of this epicenter of power. Everyone you can see. Most people are um, politely sticking to the extreme left and right sides of the streets. These people are uh, veiled or hooded, and they travel with um, scroll cases, tomes. Various administrative work seems to be going on contracts, whatever it might be. However, at the areas where the road opens up into the uh, 
various like squares and pagodas you see nobility nobility that makes the savoris look like street paupers we're talking the most ostentatiously dressed the uh, totally um adorned in uh, finery magical jewelry uh gold and brass and with a 31 you actually see someone that you recognize off in the distance uh talking to a rather large red-skinned devil oh. pointed tail twisted horns lurches is over this person that you know uh or that you've you've met before they look partially elven they have green eyes bronze skin long brown hair um dressed in this kind of emerald and green finery Um, a curved dagger at their waist and a uh, large medallion. You recognize Kalidaxin. Just with a 31, it is nobody else notices them. But they are stood in a square two blocks away. And as, the, as you come around the corner and head up the hill towards the Charcoal Palace, his unusual dress is unmistakable. Um, but yeah, you arch around the corner and now approach the gates. You can share or not share, it's up to you. Guys, I just look. I swear I just saw Kalidak zoom down one of those side streets. What are you doing here? I mean, from what we know about him, this would be like a place you'd expect to find him. Right? Yeah, good point. Probably Ew. making business. Oh, this, um... This this uh, dragon we've met who likes being in a hu human form. We'll tell you later. Ooh. Hey, Peter, Peter, do you know anything about what he's been up to? She, at the mention of Kaladak soon, like, subconsciously hunches down. Mm. He's here. I have no idea. We last encountered him, and I last encountered him when when we were all together at the Skyport that time. Did you ever encounter any of his colleagues? Yeah, he's blue friend on the seas. You mean? Voltraxis. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So was the was the cold guy as well. Uh -huh. the one that was which one do you mean? Had been slain, but spirit still haunted that mount that mountain. Um where I got this. Yeah, the yeah. Way they're set to. yeah, that's right. I remember that. Um, but those Quite are only kind of all. But there was three of them: Primarchs of Pain, Elidaxon, Zendeth, and Voltraxis. I didn't think the cold one was a part of. Uh, it. Nonetheless, is uh, Kaladaxon going to be all too happy to? See us if we bump into him. I somehow dance it. 
last time we yeah. had, we did a... Uh, we did kind of fight. <laughs> sub subject him under to control of domination. Oh, that spell I remember that. spell has long since worn off. Oh, smoke. he's gonna hate you, Smoke. <laughs> haven't seen, haven't mean you, didn't mean you see Zendeth once, or at least think we did. From afar. Yeah. Up on the tower. Well, he's not gonna cause anything here, right? In front of Palace Guard and like. Well, I guess we've got other problems to deal with. He's just a uh, unknown here. Um, Vida uh, falls in step with you, Smoke. We certainly didn't need another variable in this equation. Do you have, like, do we have a plan? Do we have a signal? Do we have a, what, what, what exactly do we intend to accomplish? We tend to have more luck when we improvise, but loosely, uh, we just need to get as close to the Sultan as we can, more specifically to the eye that he has. Uh, as far as an escape, I can run, I can push, I can slash my way out, but you'll have to speak to the spellcasters about anything more expedient than that. You're not as quick as I am, but neither of us are as quick as my father. I'm not sure I was prepared for how readily he'd ask me to take his eye. Do you think that he'd willingly allow us to escape with the other one? Or do you think he might try to Take it for himself and have both. My father doesn't intend to rule. He's... He's bitter. Vengeful. I know what that's like. You mentioned, you probably mentioned Zendeth. It's been a long time since I heard her name. My pursuit of the Black Dragon almost consumed me for 50 years or more. I've been feel like my relentless and blinkered pursuit of vengeance has really blinded me to the opportunities around me and blinded me to and she now looks at all of you how truly honest and heroic people with power can be I'm not sure my father has made those same realizations. Father is older, he's been jaded for longer. <sighs> well, if we If we have to bargain, 
Or we have to take the Eye of Murzak. Then perhaps perhaps you could find a way to use it for good. I hope so. If we do escape with it. But aren't we really here for your mother? Yes. That's what my father said, that for all the years we were together on the streets of the city of Brass, my mother was here, in these walls. It's been such a long time. Well. To grant her freedom would be the only thing I'd use the Eye of Merzak for. And that should go for all of you. We using magical items to dominate others got you into trouble with Kaladaxun in the first place. I pray none of your ambition extends as far as the Grand Sultan's. Sooner escape with your mother's life intact. Find you both a new home than abscond with yet another powerful artifact to take responsibility for and Garth. She nods and pretends to rub her wrists together um, and uh, kind of throws herself in front of your dagger. Smoke. Looks like we've got a charade to maintain. Keep it moving and I'll kick her a bit and push her. And... Mm -hmm. Is there anything anybody else would like to do or say on the approach? I want to keep looking back at that storm I've noticed to, as, for as long as I can see it, for as long as we're outside. Mm -hmm. I want to keep observing it to like determine what, how long it's going to take. Okay. You can make an intelligence check. You're doing some maths in your head. Uh, yeah, um, it's probably like tomorrow, I think. So we're good. <laughs> uh, okay. You get to the Charcoal Palace proper. Uh, and you see these uh, charcoal doors, like slates of charcoal that are uh, gilded with brass decorations. Uh, you then see like copper and brass finery and or like ornate archways, um, and uh, just a lone uh, attendee by the side uh, of the door. Um, Balhotep overtakes you at this point and uh, speaks uh, to the vizier. And after a short discussion, the doors to the Charcoal Palace open. Um, you walk along an uh, extended thoroughfare. Um, and as you enter the Charcoal Palace, the, the heat um, picks up once more. Uh, it's as if at the very top of this hill, uh, the Charcoal Palace is built on some kind of uh, fire node or some sort of volcanic uh, convergence. 
because inside the palace you can see now the worked stone uh it kind of melds into the natural volcanic properties of the rock below and you see uh rivers of lava columns of steam uh, overhanging chandeliers of brass and magically enchanted cloth that still looks as fresh as the day it was used to decorate this palace. Mia, I'd like you to make a history check. Okay. You've heard stories of the city of a thousand pearls and how in the water plane nature coral and uh the the uh, natural tempests uh currents and elemental force of water really comes together as the epicenter of the plane of water and you imagine that that place mirrors this one for the plane of fire you can feel the elemental energy around you the weave in uh, through that you can feel through the hairs on the back of your neck is particularly okay. potent here okay the city of a thousand pearls is plain of water mm -hmm. but this is like the equivalent basically exactly you really feel that for the first time this is the center of power in the plane of fire okay. um i will move you over to the map Oh, our tokens are not updated. Yeah, uh, feel free to update your tokens. Uh, I'll be just one minute while you do that. Bear with me. Oh God, what's the plan? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of, kind of half expect we're just gonna react to kind of what happens with Noxus. Um, but until then, we just schmoozing. Yeah schmoozing the guy just you know is the, the I, I think the the biggest problem is what if he's just gonna say oh thanks for uh delivering vida so let's just execute her now you know because <laughs> he can't let that happen <laughs> i guess not till he wouldn't want to i mean there's always the deal with the sultan and then use the chaos of noxus arriving to make our well, okay. that, well that's what i that's what i think yeah as long as he's not going straight away well, let's let's get what if he says like okay so take her to dungeon we can talk are we gonna allow that i think we try and wage a, um like kind of like a tour like you know we're adventures like this is a rare opportunity to see the inner sanctum of the charcoal palace and we went through all of this uh effort to bring this prisoner so that we'd have the chances as adventurers of, of repute. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good idea, but the, the, the king, the sultan's not likely going to give us the tour. He's going to send someone else to do it. Hello. Are we all updated? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Feeder isn't. I'll just. Here we go. Did we level up? She can't. <gasps> cool. <laughs> So, um, Balhotep um, stops just behind you, and you're, when you feel him uh, stopping to make progress, you will naturally come to a pause. Uh, before you, you see what you assume to be some kind of 
bodyguard. A huge, 12-foot-tall pit fiend. Uh, red skin, uh, pointed horns, a huge mace that probably weighs more than Smoke and Jacob combined. Um, a, a, a huge chain uh, around his neck uh, with what is kind of looks like a, a padlock kind of thing and yellow eyes that shine brightly. Uh, and he's just got this like man, uh, maniacal smile across his face permanently. Um, the uh, Balhotep, the Herald of Fire, kneels in deference as the person to the right of uh, the person on the charcoal throne steps forward. Welcome, Balhotep. We've granted your audience. I am Abdul Kawi, Grand Vizier to the Sultan, His Excellency, who I would like to introduce to your guests. Would you announce them? Uh, now bowing apologetically almost, Balhotep, this draconic scaled figure dressed in finery uh, and military uh, garb. Yes, my lord. As requested, I have brought forth Vida Viserion, most wanted insurgent and constant thorn in his excellency's side, and the adventuring party which were responsible for <clears throat> bringing her to justice. And he smiles. Can I insight check him? Yeah. Yeah, Dad did damn calf or did damn calf? 28. Uh... Now, you, if you didn't before, you understand that Balhotep knows more about Vida's capture than he's been letting on. Yep. Okay. Well done, Balhotep. Your reward. will be discussed in due course. For those in attendance, may I give you the honour of the Grand Sultan Marake Al-Sidan Al-Harik Ben Lazan, Grand Sultan of all of the Afrit, Lord of Flame, the potent incandescent, tempering in the eternal flame of truth and most puissant, of hunters, marshal of the fiery heart, the smouldering dictator, the crimson firebrand himself. Uh, and with that, uh, so this, the person who said that was this person. <gasps> An ifrit. Very good. dressed in fineries and armor. And he's next. Yeah, that's next that to person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and with that, you, um, the person on the charcoal throne shifts their posture and lifts their chin. Um, this being looks Efriti esque. Um, they. Uh, have almost similar features to the pit fiend before you. Uh, 
two sets of horns, uh, an almost like bull-like nose with a big ring, a big brass ring uh, between uh, in, piercing the septum, huge brass earrings and armor that seems to been have been uh, specifically designed to fit this unusually tall and hulking frame. Smoke, this person on the throne before you um, is, uh, you can tell, a not, not the kind of person who might rule through politics or bargaining or negotiation. Mm -hmm. You can tell that this person would gladly step onto the front line. Um, they look like this. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Oh, it looks like a prince of hell. Oh my it, God. It's like a, a little baby. It looks really easy and absolutely fine. Sure, but... the, thing that's yeah. not, the thing that's not pictured um, is that uh, the Grand Sultan is surrounded by a corona of pale fire and a ring of smoke that hovers above his head. It's almost like he, for those of you who have seen this spell cast before, it's almost like he's got a permanent version of Fire Shield active. He twinkles and flickers and smoulders constantly. Nice. Oh. I'll bow when he's like formally introduced. Same. Um, yeah, I'd, it's a safe thing. I'd also to like to use my Know Your Enemy feature. <laughs> uh, if we've been here for about a minute. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe it's two characteristics I can learn if they are higher or lower than my own. Okay. Want to check the dexterity score? Mine is 18. You think the Grand Sultan's is less than that. Okay, okay. Um, Don't ask HP, because... <laughs> I think that's going to be more. Oh, yeah. uh, there's not, not all of them are very useful. It's a bit limited, but what about Constitution? Mine is... My Constitution is 19. His is higher than that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So maybe deck saves against this guy. Um, okay. It doesn't let me find out any like uh, mental saves, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, Marake Al Sidan Al Harik Ben Lazan, the Grand Sultan, stands. Welcome. You have done me a great service. Abdul, please make sure that they're well looked after as long as they are telling the truth, of course. Of course, Your Excellency, shall be done. Um, you now see to the left of the charcoal throne, or your right of the charcoal throne, this the burgeoning amber crystal that flickers just like the Grand Sultan's armor with this kind of potent arcane energy. However, Abdul Kawi, the, the Grand Vizier, his eyes are not yellow. He seems to act out of loyalty. And as he does that, he floats down the stairs towards you. And with a wave of his hand, he summons a tall candelabra with three candles on it.
There are many of you. But my questions will be few. Who is your leader? Who is the person of highest status? The person who will respond to my question on behalf of the Grand Sultan. Jacob looks at Mia. Mia looks at Smoke. Smoke looks at Jacob. Billy <laughs> looks at Giselle. <laughs> Giselle is willing to take this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with no then, knowledge of anything. Let's all look at each other with our titles of being princes and princesses and leaders of communities and just nudge Giselle forward. <laughs> I like, I so like take it. this one for the team. <laughs> well, it is I. Okay, Leader of this team. Beautiful. Just going to fail on the first, isn't it? Unless she believes it. I mean, then it's truth to Giselle, right? So, um, as you step forward. Ah. Giselle. Full I. name and title. Oh God, my notes are over there, Dan. Whatever, whatever my full name and title is. Maybe I don't have one. <laughs> uh, I mean, your full name's on your character sheet, but. Get... Yes, great. That Giselle Al Akra, or Akra Car, to those in the know. <laughs> Welcome. And he casts his hand towards these three candles and they all light one after another. <laughs> You're the leader of the Star Seekers? Yes, I am. One of the candles goes out. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> today. <laughs> I am today. No? I... My dear... It seems as though you are being put into the spotlight by those with an agenda. I mean, there, there, isn't, there isn't a leader, so to speak. We're a democracy. We're in it together. Equals amongst friends. That first candle lights back up. <laughs> Very well. My first question would be, how did you come to apprehend Vida Viserion? Hmm. Well, we learned that her crew is no longer. And we said, it's time to take you to the Grand Sultan. And that's how we're here today. Brilliant. <laughs> Candle stays lit. <laughs> awesome. Very well. My second question. Do you know where Noxus Viserion is? No. Giselle didn't see the cloud. Unless she heard it, but that was never in the internet. Don't worry, you don't need to justify it. I know what the truth is. I feel like I've been caught. <laughs> Candle stays lit. My third question. How would you like to be rewarded for this effort? Certainly. I'm a bit strapped for cash. So, 
some money would be great. With that, claps his hands and the candelabra disappears. Your Excellency, Giselle al Arak here speaks the truth and desires financial recompense. Um, he then floats back up here. Um, Vida whispers just behind you, Giselle. That was pretty good. The Grand Sultan steps forward out of his throne. The ground nearly shakes beneath him as he takes two steps. And now you see all. 14 feet of him. Huge. Um, the dictator, power broker, tyrant of the city of Brass, depending on your perspective. Giselle al Arak. I grant you this wish. Step forward. She steps forward, thinking that the uh, travel plane, uh, plane travel company is in her sights. Um, Tour company, yep. With that, you. Uh, feel a slight tremor beneath your feet. And all of a sudden, like a pop, uh, you find yourself stood knee deep in gold pieces. <laughs> you can add 25,000 gold pieces to your inventory. She knows what she's going to do with it first. No. <laughs> or to stop her. <laughs> it's just loose on the floor. Yeah, it literally just appears. He just got it in front of everybody. What am I going to be? 20 minutes shuffling it into a bag. <laughs> That's awesome. a bag of holding you mentioned. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If you want it. <laughs> it's a lot of coinage. <laughs> um, you see now uh, the pit fiend steps forward and sniffs um, he kind of looks at you uh, it looks like he almost wants to eat all of the money he looks completely insane it's somewhat <laughs> unsettling <clears throat> says nothing to you not in a language that you can understand anyway. Uh, Tilly. Mm -hmm. You heard the pit fiend say, Sakura's hungry. In, in uh, Infernal? Yes. All right. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I just, um, I just kind of realized something, which, um, I don't know, um, if you let us uh, sort of um, uh, discuss, but the um, just looking at the tokens that you've got there, you know, I don't think I would like bring 12 into the chamber with Grand Sultan because that seems like it would have been a dead giveaway where we've just been. Mm hmm. Is, mm. is, would that be okay with you to to retroactively make him disappear? Yeah. <laughs> Because I just remembered about him when I looked at the tokens when you put him in, and I was like, uh -huh. oh, shit. 
but immediately when I thought about it, I thought like, yeah, that would be a bad idea. So I, I mean, I, I hope Tilly would have thought about it. Tell me, <laughs> at what point did you dismiss Twelve? Given the fact that I'm allowing you to retroactively take him away, I would, I, I would, in the I, room. I would say, I would say probably before walking into the where Balhotep was, the. Um, what you might call mm -hmm. it, the whole... Watchfire house. Watchfire house, yeah. Okay. Because I don't know, to be honest, I don't know how it works, because uh, he's not really a wildfire spirit, so I wouldn't be able to... I could maybe call up for him, and, and maybe he can show up, but I, I don't have the abilities that are linked to it, so I guess we'll just play it by ear. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to ruin all of this for everybody. You know, it's like, why do you have this fire spirit that is like straight from the fountains of the? That would have been mm -hmm. bad, probably. So, sorry. Come here. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I kind of look at this guy that just said he's hungry, and it was like a uh, concern in my eyes. Oh no. Oh, he oh. can't hear. Who can't it? Dan? Dan can't hear us, and no. we, couldn't, we couldn't hear him. <laughs> you know that. Hello? Yeah. Hiya. Fuck's sake. I don't know. Now I can hear myself again. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh no. This Early break? Really annoying. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a break there. You can think about what the fuck you're going to do mm. um, over that time. Um, I mean, it's 23 past. Are we just calling it the 20 minute break or no? Um, <laughs> He's hungry. Uh, <laughs> uh, give me till, I'll still need until 10 to if that's all right. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Yeah. Do the rest of us want to stay on and talk about what the fuck we're going to do? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. We could we could pause the stream and talk. Yeah, sure.
our tongues to wag For she who'd led us towards the light The ballad of the white stag Chairwoman sat at her desk one day while the rain came down so hard. She met five white stags who brought the sunshine back, and she made them all town guards. She was crossed by an old who armed some bombs that would make the dogs into a pond. But the stags were too wise for the tiny gnome, and they sent him back to Gond. So come gather near and bend your ear for a tale our tongues to wag. For heard we not had stayed the night, the ballad of the white stag. Hall, and she took the stags to the city wall. With a lightning strike and a nasty fall, the chairwoman saved us all. When the nightfall came and the chanting stopped, and I nearly spilt my drink. For in the dark, with mistress' aid, she turned the walls to pink. So come gather near and bend your ear for a tale our tongues to wag. Thought heard we not had stayed the fight, the battle of the white stag. The chairwoman wields her family sword And her brother wears a mask For the forger's guilds and traitors too <laughs> There's not too much to ask So come gather near and bend your ear For a tale our tongues to wag You better tip your glass Cause she saved our ass The battle of the white stag So come gather near and bend your ear For a tale She saved our ass, the battle of the white stag. Hey, ho!
Have you ever thought about how long it would take to put 25,000 gold pieces in a bag? Well, <laughs> that's what Giselle's doing right now. <laughs> For the next hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so. Um, Balhotep at this point. Grandsire, I must speak with you. Our business here may be more complicated than you imagine. Um, and uh, Marake, the Grand Sultan, uh, bids Balhotep to approach. And they step into, or out of, reality for a second. Literally, the Grand Sultan pulls back a curtain, and they step into it, and when the curtain moves again, there's nothing there. Uh, with that, the Pit Fiend and the uh, Vizier... Abdul Kawi, step forward. You will remain here until His Excellency returns. Is there anything I can do to make your stay more comfortable? Could you get someone to help my friend load all these coins up? It's, it's... <laughs> 142, 143. <laughs> of course. Um, and with that, Giselle, as you they're scooping coins into a bag, uh, some of them just start like coalescing into like uh, trails of coins and start going in one after another. Chick. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> I will. It's ruining my counting, though. <laughs> I'm just going to sidle up to him. And um, just say, a word to the wise, don't think Balhotep should be trusted on his intentions with the Grand Sultan. That one vies for great power. And then I'll just back straight. I'm going to just say that and I will walk back off. Are you, are you going to try and make a deception check? Just a little, doing? just a little. Um, <laughs> to be fair, like, I kind of believe that. Like, that's what we were saying earlier. That's sort of what we were thinking. So I don't know if it may, maybe more persuasion. Okay, that's fine. Because uh, I do think he's just a bit on the sketchy side. I don't know. That's eleven. Woof. Balhotep is one of his law, His Excellency's most trusted servitors. I wouldn't concern yourselves with any notion of disloyalty. Is there anything? His Excellency or myself might do for you. Where is it that you hail from? You're a odd collection of visitors. We have many homes, mostly among the material plane. Hmm. Yes, your delicate dispositions gave away as much. Except this one points to Tilly. Oh, me? Have you been to the plane of fire before? No, I think I, uh, I think I'd remember. Um, it's really hot in here, and well, this palace is. It's just magnificent. Do you think we could get a tour or uh, something? A tour could be organized. However, the agenda is tightly packed today. Oh, is something... If you are 
If you count yourself amongst a friend of the Grand Sultan, though, then there will be no uh, riches beyond your reach, no goal beyond your achievement, with the Grand Sultan as an ally. Many worlds are your oyster. Bray? So, are you merely bounty hunters, mercenaries, or do you have more grand ambitions? Please do not waste His Excellency's time with requests of the meager and plain variety. Well, I mean, we are a, a, a group that have affected many of great things in the material plane. We've um, done many heroic things. Um, I don't know if you heard about Star Seekers, but... The name was brought to our attention recently, but your fame and glory has not yet... Uh... In what way was our name brought to your attention? By Balhotep and his client, the Drow Lady, Shirenil Ilabar. She needs to have a personal interest in the Grand Sultan's harem. However, the idea that his Excellency keeps a collection of concubines is all but a myth. Oh, is that so? I There has definitely been a lot of rumours about that in the city. We, we saw com some coming in. <clears throat> Moving around. Didn't we? You did, Giselle, but you saw them coming into the palatial, the outer palatial region, but not into the palace. Yes, rumour mongering and speculation is the purview of peasants. However, this palace is where the real work to keep the planes together is done. So I ask again, is there something that you have as yet thought out of reach? Something, an idea, a goal behind which the Grand Sultan could put his full force? Do not waste this opportunity. Many mortals will never see it. You said you work here to keep the planes together, and to keep the, the order and the balance? That is the job of the great Caliph, lord of all the sea of fire, and mightiest of the elemental lords. We have some experience with that ourselves. The Scattered across the material plane, we have found these, for want of a better word, portals that have been opened at times, releasing great evils onto the pl material plane. Uh, uh, creatures from the abyss, uh, dendars, minions. We have been traveling, shutting them as we find them. We know there are yet more to find. If you had knowledge of where they are and an easy way for us to close them, that would be a great boon indeed. I am not familiar with a Dendar, however, if portals to the Abyss are your problem, then identifying a link or pattern would usually... Finding order to the chaos would usually yield some results. Is there anything, any similarities or anything that links the portals together? I 
we have there are a set of mirrors that seem to show each of the planes that the portals are connected to. There's also a group that seems to be opening them, but they are as yet shadowy. Mirrors. Well, mirrors are a luxury. Magical ones are a rarity. And ones that open portals are rarer still. There is one person across the plains that I am aware of who deals with mirrors. You'll find her, coincidentally, on the material plane. A beautiful lady. For a human, or an elf, I forget which one. She has long, curly red hair, and worships at the altar of the Dawn Lord. Well, that is useful. Thank you for the information. Still, finding an interplanar technician and maker of mirrors <clears throat> does not exactly excite. It would not exactly excite his lordship. I suggest you ruminate on another course of action or reward. And with that, uh, you're left alone while the vizier um, kind of busies himself looking over the schedule and kind of turns his back, kind of goes back up. Um, leaving you alone or in each other's company for a few minutes, or at least under the watchful eye of Sarkaros, the pit fiend. So he's watching us. Uh-huh. Watching you like, I don't know, like a dog watches board a washing guard. machine. <laughs> Bored God. Uh, Dan, we were wondering before, um, these tokens that are grey, are we supposed to see them? Are they some statues? They are statues. Uh, walk up to this one to take a closer look at it. I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little while away, but you go up and you see um, in front of a brazier. Um, make a history check for me. Okay. Oh, that is good. With a 19. Um, this is the woman who spoke to you in the square uh, in the Mosque of the Eternal Flame. This is uh, Celine. Yeah. Can I take a, a, a quick look to my right? Is this... Sorn. Is this Sorn? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh no! I quickly turn around and walk towards the rest of them and whisper, "Pida, your your friends," and and kind of what? gesture to the statues. Uh, Vida runs to Pilanelli, dashes to Darthris. And run back to smoke. I hope you have a plan because as soon as that son of a bitch comes back, I'm taking these shackles off. Stay calm. 
Stay calm. He must be onto us. They, he's mocking us. His statue is here. It's a ruse. We've been taken in. There's no getting out of here. If we don't strike first, we're dead. I'll backhand her across the face and be quiet, prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I give her a look as she backs off. As like, just keep it together. Uh huh. They look. <laughs> they, they look petrified. Me and Mir can do something about that. If shit starts flying. I hope. Well, do it. We need to get out of here. To be careful. We're still waiting to see what your dad's going to do, right? I don't care about the Eye of Merzak. Just, we need to get... We need to get Dartharis and Sorn and Porcelain. We need to get them out of here. What should I do? And your mum? You heard the vizier. She's not here. There is no harem. My father's just believed what he wants to believe. I've suspected it for years. <laughs> she just left him. He's going to go after him, isn't he, when he gets here? And he's coming. I need time. Does this room have windows? <laughs> no. No. It is but the we're not underground. sanctum no. in the middle of the charcoal palace. Gotcha. What do we do? What do we do? Can some of you... Can one of you reach out to my father and tell him to stop? If he comes here, then it's war. We I can tried get out. to talk to him. I tried already. You saw what it did to me. Well, if there's no getting through to him, then... Well, maybe we're going to have to just save ourselves. Get out of here. We have a chance. We might not have one when he comes back. Is um, taking a look at where the throne is, Dan, mm. this, uh, you know, this crystal that was next mm -hmm. to the throne that you described. Yeah. Does it um, look like it could contain the eye? Uh, it's difficult. Um, to see from where you are without going up and inspecting it. Um, I'll kind of slowly just like pretending to be just like a bored waiter during a visitation, <laughs> try to get closer to the steps, uh, but kind of you. watching kind of watching if, uh, you know, when the beef fiend kind of, if he reacts and says, like, you know, whatever, then I'll stop. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll try to get to the bottom of the stairs. As soon as you take another step forward from that square where you are, oh. Sakharos lashes hmm. out. Sorry, sorry. I take a step back to where I am right now. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm just not a very patient person. Uh, uh, you, and you, you hear him mutter in infernal under his breath. I'm hungry. For God's sake. <laughs> um, I'm going to reach out to my bag and take out the largest mushroom that I can find with like the relaxing properties to it. It's basically you... like volume. <laughs> um, could it is one of your special magic items? Does that have any relaxing uh, properties to it? I don't have any tinctures left of using nope. them. So no, okay. it would be just some random mushroom. Doesn't doesn't have to have any properties, but I kind of just 
want to offer him some food. Okay, so um, I will give you either an animal handling or persuasion check straight. No advantage, no disadvantage. Okay, let's do animal that. Handling animal handling on pet fiend. Yeah, he, he, he seems his intellect animalistic. seems more animalistic than a regular pit fiend. Yeah, yeah, I think Tilly fiend. would. I think Tilly would pick up on that. Let's do it. Oh, sweet! Uh, as you approach, uh, you produce a big mushroom, biggest one you got. You dust off the top. What do you say to him? You can speak infernal. I know this is but a snack, but, you know, maybe whilst you're waiting, this will just, you know, help you out. You know, when I get, like, munchies, I, uh, I am so cranky. Uh, Giselle, behind Tilly, you hear Tilly going, <laughs> uh, and... It just repeats it in her head. Yeah. I don't even know I'm speaking Infernal here. <laughs> She'll repeat it to him later. Or her later. Uh, and Sarkaros uh, nearly bites Tilly's hand off. Uh, uh, but with that score, you manage to avoid any uh, damage. Uh, and yeah, he's, he gorges himself for a few seconds. Is it... So let's say I'm like next to him. Mm -hmm. Um... Is it possible that I could take a sneak peek at the crystal, or I'm still too They're far? distracted, so I will give you a stealth check at advantage. Right. Okay. Hey! Tw Twenty. Twenty. Yeah, the vizier is uh, distracted looking at the schedule. You've fed the pit fiend. Um, and yeah, you managed to. You can sneak up to the charcoal throne, sure. Um, just while that's happening, uh, I'll give you a chance to think about what the rest of you would do. Uh, as I just go and get my tea out the oven. Hey, thanks sounds to great. It. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. I think it's Andraste, the one that gave Quest somewhere to stay. That'd be a pretty good <laughs> guess, wouldn't it? <laughs> Gonna yep. give myself a point of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Taking good note. Yeah, I saw you clock uh, the link straight away, Kirsty. Well done. So, it's happening. We, we, we're trying to like hit us with a clue by four. We need to do something, but we as players have currently no idea what we're supposed to be doing. There is no supposed to. There is none. There isn't one. This um, situation has come about through all of the happenings. So it's up to you. You've got a very upset Vida who wants to rescue her friends and get out of there. Uh, you've got the ear of the Grand Sultan of the Plain of Fire who is returning imminently. And you've also got his partially distracted Vizier and Pit Fiend. And who knows what Balhotep is telling him right now? Is he mm. just telling him, they're all deceiving you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Th though it seems like something he would have just said in the open, but who knows? So, I think we were meant uh, to find this is what, while Tilly's going up to the jewel, what are the rest of you doing? I think I would just say that um, to everyone. Be ready, but not too hasty. If we have to be separated, then we'll have to fight. Can't let that happen. But for the moment, let's just wait and see. If Noxus shows up before long, then he might give us the upper hand. We can't leave and let Noxus take the other eye. I can't. I can't leave. As a knight of mystical fire, I can't do that. You think we should we should try to get it before he arrives? I think so. Do you think that's it? Um gesturing towards the amber crystal. Okay. Tilly. Um you are inspecting this uh crystal. Uh and yeah, it doesn't look like exactly like it looks on the map. Uh, but yeah, in um, in this like decorative, on top of this like decorative urn, you see like um, uh, like a, a plinth uh, with like engraved uh, ignan on it, um, and there's all kinds of on this urn. There's all kinds of like salamandery iconography. Uh, but then on top of the plinth, which sits on top of the urn in pride of place, is a glowing eye that it hovers just above this uh, yeah, urn and plinth, about three and a half feet off the ground. So about as tall as you are. Yeah. Looks um... very similar to the jewel that was thrust into Noxus's head. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it obviously puzzles me how he can use this power without actually having it in his inside of his skull. Uh, but he just sort of sits there. Um, but, uh... Um... Yeah, I'm going to try and make my way back to the rest of them without, you know, being caught because it's a. Uh, I just wanted to confirm it's there, really. Okay. As more time has passed, the mushroom's gone down a tree, and the distraction is less effective. So the DC is higher. Another stealth check. Uh, right. Uh... Oh, pretty good. Ready. Yeah, uh, you run back down quick as you can, fleet of foot into Giselle's arms nearly. 
Yeah, I'm almost sort of um, trip on the on the huge stones mm -hmm. and kind of fall into your arms. <clears throat> oh, um, sorry about that, Giselle. Uh, okay. We and sort of gesture. We need to uh, <laughs> to go to the others. Billy, just a quick question. Yeah. Do you think I should try making? that creature that you gave food, a friend. Like it might be helpful going forward, whatever happens next. The, the problem is that the creature will know if it doesn't work, but uh, you know, it might be yeah. helpful. It, it, it could be, you can do that any time though, right? Well, Maybe we don't just... want to be fighting it. You need, it I can do it. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't want it to be fighting because then it, it doesn't work or something. <laughs> uh, it must make a wisdom saving throw <laughs> if we are fighting it. It doesn't work or something. Are you readying an action there then, Lucy, just in case things break out to cast that spell as, as soon as it, you think it's necessary? Yeah, I think I would. Okay, I'll would. give you that. What, what spell is it? Charm monster at level four. Okay. Or are you not saying to do it now before things break out? Well, as long as if it's a held action, we aren't you, fighting. You can It'll keep be... concentrate. Basically, you're keeping concentration on it. It could you could keep concentration for you know however long you want, as long as it, nothing breaks it. But if you, you don't use it now, it, if you well, wish, or do the held action, it's up to you. Yeah. The save I... is it, it has advantage if we're fighting it. Has advantage on the save. Ah, right. So, but if things kind of sort of kick off, but we didn't start it, it's like it's, it's a bit of a grey area. If we haven't attacked it, if we haven't been aggressive towards him specifically, uh, yeah. you might. I'll tell you now. You know what I mean? If the Grand Sultan orders him to attack you, you'll have disadvantage on the save. Okay, so we'd be hostile. Or well, instantly, yeah. he, he will have advantage. Yeah, yeah on the. There so do it now. Then. But but then again, it's a hostile action, right? If it doesn't work, he he will immediately treat it as a hostile action and shit will break. We will we would have started something right there. That's what I mean. Um maybe so I, see as, what we, as we as we go when back, they come back. Yeah, as we go back to the rest, uh, and you're just thinking about it, I I'm just gonna tell everybody that um the jewel is there. Is is right there next to the throne. It looked like it's ready for plucking, but it's you know it's probably not that easy. Do but we, it's there. Do we try and do it right now before they come back? This could yeah. go really Enjoy. bad. Look, I can get two of them unfrozen from the stone. I only have. I only is it, have. Is it inside of the crystal? You know, it hovers above it. <clears throat> it might be held in place with with magics. It's that there's definitely something there. It's not going to be as easy as grabbing it. So to, to whoever does this uh, to be prepared for some explosion of some kind. Okay, Mir, if if I had to make a grab for that jewel. Do you think you could dispel any magical effect that might be holding it down? I can try. I mean, if Giselle can make the Pete Fiend our friend, maybe just tell them to go and get the jewel for us. I lo I'll look over to Vida as we're discussing this. What is she? Does she look like she's desperate to 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 move to go? Yeah, she was. She wants to move. Yeah. She's a wild card if we do try and hold ourselves back anyway. She might just... Mira, have you got any diamond dust on you? No. Okay. You need to tell me, um, Vida, which two you're going to pick. I can only get two of them released from the stone for now. Wow. Um, she looks at all four of them.
some of them have the components. I need to free the others. Could you, would the others fit in your bag, Tilly? <laughs> what are the statues? <laughs> We're going to be stuffing statues <laughs> in this bag <laughs> in the middle of the scale. I mean, Jacob, you always have such a, such great ideas. Uh, I don't think so. Vina I mean, does not know if any of them have components, but she knows that um, Dartharis, Pilinelli, and Selene are all spellcasters. Okay, well, um, if push comes to shove, smoke, you could grab one of the statues. Maybe Mir could grab the other. If we need to get out of here. Who's going to get the eye? We might have to make a compromise somewhere. Can't save everyone. Peter looks distraught. Whatever we do, we have to do this quick. They're going to come back. Right. Giselle, get ready. And I'm going to nudge Mir, shall we? Let's just start walking. Like at first, it's just like casual, you know? And then as soon as it kicks off, we've got to run. I'm just gonna get this as close is for as me we to can. dispel. Yeah, I'm thinking that if you right? might, you might need to be there to, because if I grab it and pull it, and it's just like no, it's magically held down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I can use my strength to try and, and speed to try and grab it. Spell magic is quite a lar like quite a long distance, isn't it? It's like sixty feet. Oh, is it? You don't have to be right there. I don't think so. Even better. Okay, I'm just going to get, like, I don't know, as far as I can without it getting suspicious. That's about as far as you would get. Yep. And then I'm looking over at Giselle. Uh, it's time! Okay! <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's just do it. Uh, she's going to cast... Oh, no. Oh, God. There's a pressure. Um, Charm Monster um, at um, fourth level. Okay, so I've got to make a wisdom saving throw, DC 18. Okay. I rolled a natural 20 oh. for, a, for a 30. <gasps> for a what? For a 30. Oh. <laughs> hey, pal. Oh, it didn't work, guys. It didn't work. Yeah. Um, Sarkaros, uh almost like starts barking, like grunting, and uh, the Grand Vizier. What? Uh, oh, sorry, my roll tiny's been a bit weird. Hold on one second. Been real funky. Do not approach the charcoal throne, lest you want to be fed to Sarkaros. Now then, Grand Sultan shall return momentarily. Think on any requests you might ask of him. Um, <laughs> I'll be like, <laughs> when he stood there, I would say, I request to know what that amazing piece of artwork is there behind, just behind up there, on, mounted up on the wall, high up. And I'm going to try and get him to look around and I'm going to make a run for it. Make a deception check. Oh my god. Uh, god, look at this. Yeah. Look at this Banksy behind you. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god. He doesn't even. He, he just. Uh, closes his mouth and stares straight through you. Fine, fuck you! I'm gonna run. <laughs> I'm gonna oh my god! And I'm gonna take the dodge action. Ah. Ah. 
Okay, we uh, we we will. Uh, I'll give you that action. So I'll give you the the dodge action and the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but you tell me where you want smoke to end up, then John, and then we'll roll initiative. Right uh, by this, where the eye is. Okay. Okay. I'm planning uh, to so use my would... action surge on the same turn if that counts for anything. Uh, uh, action surge yeah, for you dodge. would as you've crossed. You know, you you uh, as you cross the vizier, he would get uh, an opportunity against you, hmm. and you kind of doing something most uh, okay. undone. Hundred percent. Um. So the vizier is going to be use his ability. Hold on. That's a big sword. All the better to hit you with that. Um, the vizier, as you go past him, uh, holds out his hand as in a stop. Uh, in an instruction, I needed to make a wisdom saving throw. I'm really good at those. Mm. Okay, I'm oh, going to use my oh. ability to reroll Indomitable. Yes! Oh, fuck yeah! Indomitable! <laughs> oh, fuck yeah! It, it was a DC 19, and you're oh all my natural god. 20. Yeah. Oh my god. So, uh, as you uh, brush off the vizier's instruction at that point ladies and gentlemen we'll roll initiative <laughs> oh my god how ah. is this? i always get the best initiative <laughs> Sorry about this. I put the, I brought the turn order up. But there was nothing in it, and then as soon as everyone starts rolling, all of the turns from the last encounter are on it. So I'm going to delete. The, remember what you rolled, because mm -hmm. I'm going to delete them, and you guys can re-add them, please. Uh, very annoying. So. Yeah, now just highlight your token, roll initiative, and put the original number in, if you will. Damn it, there goes my crit for the day. Sorry, I lost the stat block when I restarted. Just be a sec. I'm using some stat blocks from the uh, 5e conversion of the Alkadim setting, the Zakara book. Uh, it's cool, cool. shit. Is that the same one that had Jadana in it? No, that's a different book. I've also bought. I'll pretend I know what all of that means, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coincidentally, it's the same book that I got. You remember when um, the two, uh, the Flying Fish Sisters, uh, fought you with um, John's Black Cloud of Vengeance character turned into Black Cloud of Vengeance? Yeah. It's the same one. Hmm. Sorry, it's just been a little bit annoying. There we go. Um, hmm, why didn't that work? Sorry.
All right. Um, is that everyone on the board? Yeah, hold on. The pit feet? Yeah. Uh, I rolled for him, but he's not in there. Whoops. <laughs> One enemy has initiative worse than Tilly. That's great. That is great. Uh, hold on. I mean, as far as I consider it, isn't Tilly almost always high on mushrooms? Cool. And other stuff. Um, oh, this is going to be rough. We saw that. Okay. It wasn't the. It was just a roll. It. I'm re. Re. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, <coughs> sorry. It's very frustrating. Hold on. Don't worry. It's all fine. whisper thank you and then uh... okay someone just roll me d20 if they would i can do it mm -hmm. oh sorry thanks yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll take the jack of roll. Probably better for you guys anyway. Um, right. So, um, Jacob, you see smoke make a dash past the vizier. What do you do? Uh, go uh, I'll head to the bottom of the stairs and stand here. I'll draw, I'll draw my weapons, but not do anything else. And I'll take the dodge action as a action. Okay. I'm trying to if I'm trying to potentially draw the pit fiend's attention. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah, you, you stand in front of him, you, you draw your weapons. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, Mia. The, 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 the people have sprung into action. Jacob faces yeah. down the pit fiend. The vizier looks aghast. Um... Did you say around the yellow gem there's like a bit of a kind of sparkly radiance, the same thing that comes off of the Grand Sultan? Yeah. I want to try and dispel it. So I'm not trying to dispel magic on the eye, but on... Dispel the magical the effect around it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then... Um... I would like you to make an arcana check. Okay. Or is it spell casting modifier? Do I need to... like... Yeah, it's spell basically casting. spell casting, yeah. yeah. Does it depend what level I cast the spell magic at? Uh yeah, the DC will be affected by that, yeah. Okay, so I'll cast it at sixth level. Okay. Um and then I'll post it. Um, at higher levels, you automatically end if it's equal to or less than uh, the level of the spell slot you used. So this will automatically work if the enchantment is at sixth level or lower. Uh huh. It's not. So uh, we need an arcana check. All right. Yeah. Um, 
spellcasting ability check. Oh yeah, sorry, spellcasting ability check. So that's wisdom check. Plus six, yeah. right? So that's wisdom. I'm mm -hmm. going to use my portent, so I'm going to roll an eighteen plus yes. six, so twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. What's so, uh, the, the DC was 18, so rolling a natural 18 with your portent will mean that uh, as smoke gets up to uh, the floating, shimmering eye, it just drops into the plinth. It's only about this big. Uh, is that your action? Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay put, and that's it. Okay. Uh, the vizier um, is going to get another go at trying to get a hold of smoke. So um, he's just seen you cast a spell, though. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. He is going to. Oh, he's. <laughs> he's not a defender. He's a vizier. So he is going to shriek and uh, shout, Sakaros. Help us! Uh, and he's going to point his hand towards Sarkaros's chains that he's in, and they're going to disappear. Um, with that... Oh, great. Oh, did I do initiative for Vida? She would be chained up anyway, so hold on one sec. Didn't put it in. Rolled for it. Does she, John? Does she need an action to drop the chains? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, with that, uh, the uh, we go to Giselle. Sorry, um, Giselle. Hmm. What are you doing? Um, I'm going to try charm person on the guy that's just got, got the chains. Put, can you put the description up for me? Of Pretty much the same as, but yeah. Sorry, can you hear me? Um, I'm going to get you to make an arcana check. Okay. okay, with a 15, you would know that the Ifrit that you're going to cast this spell at would not be affected by this first level enchantment spell because they're not humanoid. They're basically a monster. They are giant-sized genie person, not a humanoid. So I'm going to let you roll back on that and do something else with that arcana check, if you want. If you'd have rolled uh, less than a 13, then the spell would have just failed and it would have been your action wasted. Um, I think I... Hmm. I, s I think I could still try Charm Monster again on this <laughs> creature instead. Yeah, so you're like, which spell? Uh, oh, which no, one? It's oh, which one type? <laughs> oh, God. Um, because, like, nobody's actually attacked yet, and I don't want to be the first to do that. So, yeah, I'm going to try Charm Monster at fourth. And are you doing that on Sarkaros or the Vizier? The one that I just tried and determined it was a monster. Oh, that's on the Vizier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel like 
being friendly with him might help us. Let's see. Wisdom. Wisdom you save? Yeah. Uh, just put Charm Monster up for me while I go and make that save. Yeah, it has an advantage. Yeah. Smoke's just push past it, and uh, so it will have advantage. Technically, fighting it, is it? <laughs> we <laughs> you are. It's. It's. You're in. You're in initiative. You're now like just because someone hasn't struck it doesn't mean it's not hostile towards you. Mm, okay. Um, I rolled a natural eighteen. Oh no. Okay. Well, that didn't work again. Um, mm -hmm. bonus action. I'm going to use my new spell, which How's is that? draconic transformation. Ooh. Okay. Just post that one up for me. Although, it, does it use a spell slot? It, I mean, you, you've cast, yeah. you've already cast a um, a spell that requires a spell slot, and therefore, as a bonus action, you can't oh, do right. anything that requires another spell slot. So, um, you could have cast a cantrip and cast this spell, but because you you can't you can't rinse two spell slots in a yeah. turn. I remember now. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, well, Did you have a different bonus action you can do or not? Not that's not a cantrip. Um, well, not, no, I'm not going to do anything. No. I'm going to okay. just worry Staying about where you are. every spell that I ever have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Smoke. Yep. I see the jewel drop. Mm hmm. I'm going to snatch it. Okay. Uh, just keep in mind that you have that. Um, bear with me one second. I'll put a token on for a little bit of uh, pass the parcel in a minute. That would help, yeah. Thank you. The uh, red seems like for the eye of Merzak. This is the second control creatures jewel that you've had in your life, Smoke. <laughs> it's like a habit yeah. for you now. <laughs> okay. I was just thinking, if Smoke put it, if Smoke lost an eye and put it in, then he's really Jade's twin. She is missing mm. an eye, right? So cool. So I'm cool. going to try not to lose an eye, but if it just so happens on the way back it, over it, to it, you guys that someone out. knocks it my just... eye out, <laughs> only you know, Vita can just pinch it out. Um, I will. So I'll use my feline agility. So that was an action to grab it, right? Yeah. So I should have oh, 10, 20. I'll just. Will he take another opportunity attack, or or has he used his reaction this turn actually? Uh, he he used it um, before the initiative started, so it's okay. not this not this turn technically. So yeah, he would get um, a, an attack of opportunity, and he would lash out of you in a pa at you in a panic, uh, and he will roll a natural twenty. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! Goodness. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like you to take twenty six slashing damage. Okay, as he rakes his scimitar across your back. Plus me, one, eight, four. Uh, but it shouldn't stop me moving, so I will... Nope. What was that? 20, 30, 40. So I'm going to have to use my feline agility this round. I'm going straight to Vida. I will use my action surge to... Hold on. Uh, you also, coming down the stairs... Uh, would enter and leave the Pit Fiend's rather extended attack range. Okay. And thus, uh, he's going to reach out and grab you. Uh, I'd like... Uh, it, it's a 22 to hit. Does that hit you? Uh, no, it doesn't. Oh, okay, then. He just swipes okay. and you're too quick for him. Nice. Um, so I will use my action surge then. That's to undo the manacles of Vida. Cool. And then, I mean, if I can't give it to her, I will hold it 
out, ready for it to grab. And I'm just going to say, this is better than in your hands than mine. Uh, okay, hold on one second. Um, do you want me to put a little token so it's the same? Yeah, if, uh, if, if, she's, if she's got it, or do you want me to be holding yeah. it until her turn? She's got it, yeah? It's her turn next, so oh, she's going to take it. Yes. Okay. Um now then. Feed it um is going to uh take the eye. Uh, from you, Smoke, and she's going to look. Are we... Are we taking this or are we using it? I ain't your boss, Vida. <laughs> okay. You leave note to her. Um, I, I feel really, as a DM, I feel really conflicted here because this is a potentially very important decision that I know what Vida could want to do in character, but I don't want to take agency away from you guys and what you want to happen. So I'm going to give you a choice that you can vote on. And they're both plausible. So I'm not, I, basically, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, make this decision because it's going to have far-reaching consequences one way or the other. So, so she can take the eye, pocket it, keep it for later. You, find, you don't know what it does. Um, it's the safe option. Vida is angry on, and distraught, uh, especially seeing her statuesque friends. And she knows that one way to attune to an eye of Merzak straight away is to take her own eye out. Now, Vida isn't her dad. She's not even my character. I guess Kirsty, uh, you'd I, have the deciding vote. I would like I to let Kirsty decide personally. How can I? I feel like that's only fair. That, can't, that, that makes sense to me, too. She's your character. <clears throat> We we do, however, know what the eye does, at least from second-hand information, right? It is used to subjugate control uh, against somebody's will, override will of somebody who is um, on the plane of fire. That's what you've been told. Yeah. Not that it would uh, sway anything for Vida, or it could. I don't, I don't know. Kirsty. You have been on Vida's journey longer than anyone else. Yeah. Do you think you understand um, where she's at right now? Yeah. So, uh, I think in this heightened state of emotions, she would do it. Take her own eye. Yeah. Like, would she get smoke to do it? But I know, I think she, she's probably the one that is dexterous enough and hard enough to do it. Okay, then. I agree completely, Kirsty. I think that's because I understand exactly why she would as well. Smoke, as you hand over and she, she kind of falters for a moment looking for that reassurance when you say I ain't your boss she looks around at the statues no one is and she rips Bass. her own eye out <laughs> and you can see blood pouring from the socket as she uses her action to jam 
the jewel into her own head and she drops to her knees and screams and begins to uh yeah uh set a light just exactly the same thing that happened to her father uh so yes feeder is on her knees burning tilly <laughs> Look at that, like, in shock, <laughs> in absolute horror and shock. Um, but then um, um, she she uh, gathers herself and she knows what her role is here right now and thinks could get really bad. So I'm going to run over to this statue right here. Um, and I'm going to cast... Greater Restoration spell. Okay. Using one of the two uh, portions, if you will, of Diamond Dust that I have. Okay. And that's uh, Pillinelli who stood there. Bear with me one second. Delete. You now have an alive and well Pellinelli nice. on your team. Nice. Awesome. Um, let me just get to the right page. If you remember, she's the heart playing bard. Is she the one that doesn't really wear clothes? Uh, yeah, but she's... Uh, also now a Knight of the Ashen Palm in crimson red armor. Uh, so, yeah, she's a follower of Elastray, who, yeah, his followers are often naked at night. Don't blame me, it's fucking Ed Greenwood or some shit. Um, she rolled a 25 on her initiative. Yes. Uh, just be like holding her hands as, as it gradually becomes flesh and as soon as she draws breath. Tilly's like, shit's going down. Get ready. It's going to get bad. She uh, stumbles and falters before uh, dropping to her knee. And when you say this at eye level to her, Tilly, she looks up at you and she, you know she knows what to do. Um, That's the end of my go. Okay. Well, now it's Sarkaros's go. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Jacob is in the firing line. Yep. Better oh, goodness. Jacob than Giselle or Tilly. Okay. Um, it's going to. Oh, it gets to make one of each. Uh, so it's going to do a bite attack first for a 28 to hit. Yes. That's bad dog. Uh, then you need to take. Uh, 19 piercing damage. Um, however, you're immune to poison, aren't you? Yep. So you don't take the 21 poison damage or have to make a constitution save. <laughs> you're the best person to Ooh. fight it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's then nice. going to do a claw attack for a 21. Does that hit you? No, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, it's then going to do a mace attack. All oh, right. Yeah, it's a bit uh, fiend. It's, it's bad. <laughs> uh, the 21 doesn't hit? Nope. Uh, and then it's going to whip around its tail. Oh, four attacks. Nice. For a 31 to hit. Yeah. Let me just check. Okay. Let yeah, me that. just double check. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's 21 bludgeoning damage. How long can he dodge to have that? Okay. Uh, you like you hear this roar, this feral roar, this uh, animalistic pit fiend uh, is has been let loose by Abdul Kawi, the Grand Vizier, um, in the hope that this uh, impertinence will be subdued. However, we get to the top of the round, and it's Pellinelli's go. Uh, I guess Pellinelli will go to help Jacob. How will she do that? Uh, well. She's she can cast Charm Monster herself. Nice. Uh, so she's gonna cast it at uh, 
fourth level. Her spell save DC isn't that great. Um, so we will see. They've got to make a whizzy save. Uh, it also gets advantage. Uh, and it's fine. <laughs> No, nowhere near failing that save, I'm afraid, Pillinelli. Uh, so, yeah, she, like, um, she tries to sing this, like, soothing elven hymn in order to calm Zarkaros. Uh, and he just, he, he, he kind of looks dazed for a moment and smiles uh, and then just roars again. Uh, oh, that didn't work. Uh, Jacob. Bad dog. Smack. Uh, so first attack. Double hit. Twenty two damage. Mm -hmm. Second attack. Hits. So this one, it's fourteen piercing, and because it's the second. Time with the same thing it's gonna do. Oh, sorry. Five uh ten thunder damage. Mm-hmm. And then the third attack. Uh nice. Yeah. Nice roll. Going for it. Uh twelve piercing, and you know what? I'll burn a spell slot. And uh, to do, I'll do a second level, so it takes another 18 thunder damage on top of that. Cool. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Bang, bang. Bad However... Dog. As your, um, you know, a flurry of hits, uh, expertly slicing, piercing, and then backing up with this cacophonous thunder damage, uh, the Sarkaros, like, he, he, it's almost pushed back to the edge of this ledge. He shakes his head and smiles as if he enjoyed it. Oh, no. I, yeah, I can go with that. Oh, no. Okay. Enjoy pain. Great, that is my turn. Uh, with that, uh, ladies and gents. Oh no! No the veil. No opens. We we no, weren't no. expecting you back yet. <laughs> back in a minute, please. I <laughs> just. <laughs> you kick off in the in the throne room. He knows about it wherever he is. Um. So, goodness. Uh, he will, he will scold Abdul Kawi momentarily, and then he would realise what what's happened. Here? Um, and thus he would. Yeah. Uh, bear with me one second. Hold on, I just I'm casting a ninth level spell. No, <laughs> make sure I know how it works. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's great! Uh, yeah, wow. Kirsty, All right, Kirsty, you're the one that made this decision for Vida. You are going to roll for her. Um, was someone asking me something as well? Oh, I, I, was, I was just making a joke that uh, counterspell it. It's a shame none of us have that. <laughs> I was going to get that tattoo. Yeah, that was <laughs> such a good tattoo. That would have been great right about okay. now. <laughs> um, the Grand Sultan 
uh, flies over the top of. Um, oh, fuck's sake, hold on. It's been really slow. Flies over the top of the vizier and uh, lands at the base of the throne. Um, he is going to cast Prismatic Wall around Vida and Smoking Mirror in a sphere you to get you both in. Uh, I need you both to make con saves. The DC is high. What's Vida's um, Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, for Vida... Uh, f- she gets a plus nine. An advantage or no? Is it just proficiency? Uh, it's ju- it's just plus nine. That's it. Okay. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> what? Of course. You go fuck yourself. <laughs> Smoke and Vida resist the prismatic wall. Let's see what the fuck happens. That was a ninth uh, level spell. That was a ninth level spell. Not that the fucking Grand Sultan gives a fuck, but um He's got like four of them. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Hold on. This is a really fucking. I think it. Ha- I think it happens. Ninth level, it happens. And what you've done is you've resisted the first layer. Okay. You want to post it for us to have a look? Yeah, or? let's have a look, shall we? Oh, I. C- I need to just deactivate my always whisper. Uh, so, hopefully, yeah, you can see that now. Holy shit, Whoa. that's a long Gee, spell. Workers. My god. So, so you created a I'll, I'll, I'll read it out just so no, we're not all just reading the same thing. So, a shimmering multicolored plane of light forms a vertical opaque wall up to 90 feet long, 30 foot high, and one inch thick, centered on a point you see within range. Alternatively, you can shake the wall into a sphere uh, with up to 30 feet diameter. I've already said he's just doing it. It says up to 30 feet, so he's just yeah. doing the sphere around Vida and Smoke. Mm-hmm. Um, the wall remains in place for the duration, which is 10 minutes. Um, if you position the wall so it passes through a space, blah, 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 I didn't do that. Sheds, that, sheds light. You and creatures you designate the time you cast the spell can pass through it. Uh, if another creature that you can see the wall moves within 20 feet or starts to turn there, the creature must succeed on a con save or become blinded for one minute. So that's pretty much everybody else on the battlefield has to make that save. <laughs> um, the wall consists of seven layers, each of a different colour. When a creature attempts to reach into or pass through the wall, it does so one layer at a time. Uh, so yeah, sorry, I, it's, it, I did a con save because that's what it came up on roll 20. But a con save is actually what everybody else has got to do. And that wall is there. It's a ninth level spell. Yeah. So they are imprisoned. They can't Pretty leave much. unless they go through it. And then for each layer to go through, they take 10d6 damage of different kind as they try to get this the fuck out like of there. like nine turns just to get out of there if it doesn't <laughs> kill us trying. 90d6, yep. We've all got um, constitution saving thrown now. Well, uh, yes. Yeah. Everyone on the outside. Uh, I'll say, Jacka, because you're engaged with the pit fiend, you you wouldn't be blinded because you've literally got your back to it. It's but, 20, 20 feet. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Giselle, Mir, and Tilly have got to um, make wait. that. Oh, no, I'm definitely 20 feet away from yeah. yeah, so it's at the start of our turns. Do you want us to do it now? or? No. Uh, no, just remember to do it though at the start of your turn. Make sorry. that save. Okay, the the other two did it already, so I'll do it as well. Oh, okay, so. sorry. Yeah, so you can put the status sorry. on you. It's all right. It's all right. Um, so 
Giselle and Tilly are blind. Oh Maybe no. What? That sucks. How long does it say you're blind for a minute? Yeah, a minute. Oh, bullshit. So do we... Do we know, for example, to hit it with cold damage on the first turn no. and then... No. You've never seen this spell before in your fucking life. Oh, um... Ah! The people inside would have to make a roll too, right? No? So the first... I got them to make a con save, next. which they both passed. Ah, so they're fine. Yeah. So is is that against the first layer, the red layer? No, because they're not moving no, through just it the blind. It was effect. against the blind yeah. effect. Ah, yeah. No, that that's fine. just on the blind save, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the Grand Sultan traps you. Oh. And in this they not take wall. the red damage, fire damage? Because they're not moving through it yet. That needs to be their decision to go through it. Oh, I see. They don't take damage unless they try to get through it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're in like a giant gobstop, yeah. looks like. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, yeah, that was. Uh... That was fucking time. great. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Mia. Yeah, what the fuck? Um, I was just wondering... At least you're not blind. I'll try. Uh, whether... I... Whether... No, identify is just for items, isn't it? I couldn't use identify to, like, identify what the spell is, right? Um, given that you're an Arcana cleric and it's plausible that you could have read about it, I will give you an Arcana check. Not an advantage, just what are you trying to figure out? Uh, but like basically, I want to sort of figure out what this spell is. See what the weave, ha like how it's been manipulated to do this. Like I can see that it's something I've never seen before. I assume that I can see that it's very high level. Yeah, you would know that just intuitively. And can I see the layers in it? Uh, because it's prismatic, I get you know. I I, I would uh, I, the way I would understand it is that you'd see the kind of shimmering reflectivity of like multiple layers. I'm not sure how precisely you'd be able to pick out how many they are and how many colors there are, but you could tell there were multiple layers between the outside and the inside. Oh, oh right. the, e, e, yeah. E, each each uh, uh, sort of uh, layer has different ways of like dealing with it. I, I think that's that would be a very useful information for her to know. Yeah, <laughs> that's like the kind of understanding that I want to get. Um. So, okay. What? I mean, I think the way it's designed is for trial and error mostly. So I'll give you an arcana check, and the um, if I just get this right, um, it's gonna be here really hard to play it because we we see the description of the of the of the spell. Yeah, but I'm just I'm just trying to trying to understand which is the innermost and which is the outermost. I think the innermost is the red layer, and the outermost is the violet layer. I think. Uh. Oh. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. So violet oh, is the layer. Do I choose? The you can put it in a line. So... Uh, but he, but he didn't. So. No. So because you've chosen to put it in a sphere, you can choose to have the sphere either red outside or red inside. Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to say it's red on the inside and violet on the outside. That makes sense. Okay. Um. So did you want to make me make to make an arcana check? For you to figure out which layer is on the outside? What I was kind of wanting to basically cast identify, so use a slot on my scepter to understand the spell. But I know that's mm. not how identify work. No. So I can just do something else. 
because... yeah, I don't want to. Uh, I mean, uh, you've helped me read it and helped me interpret it, but then I don't want us just going through the motions. So, like, if we kind of zap back into character, uh, I, I'm not going to make you use a spell slot for this because it just wouldn't work. But I will give you an arcana check if you can try and understand what magical effect the outermost layer has. Okay. That's right, what I'm cool. willing to give you. Twelve. Okay. Twelve is not so great. Um but I think you would infer seeing Giselle um kind of holding her eyes that this outermost layer has something to do with blindness. Um so just being careful with that outer layer um or trying to circumvent blindness while dealing with it might be a good thing to do. And was that my action to do that? No. no. Uh, Dan, cool. in the seventh uh, layer, when it describes Violet, it does say um, we can repeat the, the save at mm -hmm. the start of our turns. On a failed save, the creature is blinded. It must then make a wisdom saving throw at the start of your next turn. A successful save ends the blindness. If it fails that save, the creature is transported to another plane of the GM's choosing and is no longer blinded. I didn't see that one. Uh, yeah, no, you, you guys aren't dealing with the outer layer trying to hack in. Uh, so you don't ignore number seven. Your blindness comes from the top of the spell where it says if you start or move within 20 feet of it, you, you have to make that save or be blinded for a minute. Okay. If, if I was going to try and go inside and pass through that layer, that's yeah. when this would... Yes. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, gotcha. Woof. I didn't want to be transported to a different Jesus. Place. Can you imagine? Just... I'll get you. Oh, he's... They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, okay. Do not. Um, do not. Let's go. Mm. I'm going to try and deal with another problem, and I'm going to try and banish the pit fiend. Oh, sweet. Cool. <laughs> that is useful. All right, so what save do I have to make? Charisma. Cool. I get advantage. But he also barely has words, so maybe he isn't very charismatic. Oh, it, it oh. I turned my whisper off, but you can see he passed it. All right, fine. He is not banished. He's not banished. Um, that's fine. I will go to Giselle and just like take her elbow and just be like, it's okay, I'm here. And that's it. Okay. Uh... Abdul Kawi um, is going to shout from behind his master, you should have bargained! Um, and uh, what, are they, what are they going to do? I don't think they would get involved. They're just going to be happy taunting you. Um, however, as uh, his lordship came back, so too Will Bal Hotep. Oh. Uh, hold on. Where have I banished this fucker to? There we go. He's not there, sorry. He was back up here. Um, all right then. Uh, <laughs> Is he surprised? <laughs> leaping to see? his lord's defense. Uh, he will jump in and go for uh, the nearest person, which is Jacob. Uh, with his fiery lance. Oh, yay. Oh, no, that's a different attack. No, he can't do that. Uh, two fire claws he can do. Okay. Uh, for a 24, does that hit you? Yeah, that hits. The other one won't hit you, but take... 14 slashing and 11 fire damage, if you will. 25, yep. Ouch. Okay. Uh, Giselle, it's all gone tits up and you can't see. Mm -hmm. The um, fuck? Um, I'm going to... <laughs> all my spells are like sea within range. Um... 
I'm going to cast Minor Illusion as a cantrip, if I can, and just to create another Giselle as, a, as an image. Uh, that would be something that requires silent image or major image. Minor Illusion, if you post it up, it's, it's a much smaller effect, that. If you just post the spell description. It's like a noise or a... Oh yeah. Um, you can see, if you create an image of an object, such as a chair, muddy footprints, it must be no larger than a five-foot cube. Um, so it's... Uh, it, it, the, yeah. For a cantrip, to get a full convincing copy of you, it would be a, a, a bit... Uh, it would be a bit too much to ask of a, of a cantrip, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. I think the goal was just to try and like have a distraction while she's blinded. Um, okay. Well, that's possible with minor illusion, but it is uh, what like create a wall in front of her, or or something that like for that five foot would just be a bit of a distraction that they wouldn't know was an illusion until they tried. Like a deflect kind of thing. Hmm. Just because I'm blind. Okay. Um, tell you what. Give me a... Uh, you, you can choose. Give me a charisma or a stealth check. With a 24, uh, you just instinctively try and use your magic to hide. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, the stone under your feet turns to a lush carpet, and you sink back into a cushion. And the smell of sweet treats permeates your nostrils. <laughs> I could have just unbottled respite, I think. Um, okay, cool. I'm, well, I'm, you're hiding. Yeah, I'm hiding. Don't know what everybody else can see. Is there a bottle right there yeah. where she's... There's just a bottle <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, God, good. So there's only two people to fight uh, all these uh, bad guys. I'll just put I that think. little purple marker. You're still blind, but now you're hiding in a bottle. Got some okay, light, yeah? Yeah, fine, yeah. I'm just going to pick out. I tried to give you the effect you wanted while using a different way, but... Um, okay. Uh, smoke. Um, so... Just to, just to start with, uh, I'm going to try and, you know, escape through the wall. <laughs> oh, God. It doesn't seem like it's uh, someone to look like a stone wall or anything like that. It's like strange light, so... Yeah, strange can't... red light. It's not like I can dispel magic or anything, so I'll just give it a shot and try and move through it. Okay, hold on. I think it... As it passage or reaches through each layer, it makes a deck save. Yeah, so you have. Yeah. I think you have because you start in your turn in the red layer. You have to make the deck save. Right. Mm, he didn't start. Yeah. He, he's just if he's moving through it, then that's. But well, that's what he's already decided. Into... That yeah, yeah. He's yeah, that is what do. I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with so, my, well, with make the deck movement. save. Make it good, John. Make it good, because ten d six ain't no joke, man. Oh God! Uh, no! I'll, I'll indomitable and and give it another try. Twenty three. We mark that. That's up. a successful save. Still takes half. Uh, I, I, so... Are you sure it takes half? It because... says it right there. Does it? In the spell description, under one. Half as much on a success. Yeah, yeah. Okay. However, the damage on the red layer is fire damage. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah! So you would That's take right. 40 fire damage. It's just like... Uh, sorry, half of that. You would take 20 fire damage, uh, but you are fine. Yeah. Um, however, um, 
you can't you feel like you can't move through this red layer um so what would be your instinct at that point if you're not making progress through this barrier is that do you not make progress through one each time no it says as it passes or reaches while... through each layer makes a deck save hold on uh... So Hold one on. layer at a time. Oh yeah, it does so one layer of time. As, so it, it, passes. as it passes. Yeah, yeah. So you have passed through. through. You so passed through the red layer. You see yeah. the orange one. In yeah. Front sorry, of I got mis I got confused because yeah. it said it can be destroyed with twenty five cold damage. Uh, so do you want to put a cut a marker now to indicate that you're in the orange yeah, layer? Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. So <laughs> orange. So I'm in the orange layer, right. So all you've used there is your movement, but I'm not sure how, what else you'd really be able to do with your action. <laughs> I'll turn around and say to uh, Fido, shit! <laughs> uh... I think you could just, you could literally just keep going, right? Because you could go through all of them. In oh, because I'm just moving, so I could try just to continue. Moving. It's not, it doesn't take any action. Ah, okay, okay. That we can true. keep going then. It's like, uh, it's, it's, like you want to it's like a game of chicken with a ninth level yeah. fucking spell. <laughs> so it's ninth enough. Level. The first one is like enough for me to realize that something happens when I try and get through a layer of it. Uh, it blows oh yeah, you're up, like on okay. fire, basically. Yeah. yeah. So then I'm like, shit. I don't know if it's going to be the same or effect or not. I'm kind of half thinking it might just blow up again. In which case, I'll be fine. So I'd definitely at least give it a shot. So we'll try for the orange <laughs> one. Okay, and the deck save. <laughs> Just tell me what the role is. Uh, da, 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 da. That's so good. That is such a fucking great spell. It's Ooh, 19. 19. That's a fail, I'm afraid. Oh, oh my. This is going to be nearly impossible. God. So I need you to take 35 acid damage. Okay. Oh, no. To think it, I shouldn't have even used my Indomitable on the first one because I, I don't think you need to succeed in order to keep moving. You just need to succeed to yeah, have the damage. Yeah, you're but, right. Yeah. Well, but never I didn't mind. That. Yeah, like, um, you're now in... You, yellow. You've passed through the orange onto <laughs> yellow. Yeah. You don't need to keep changing your token if you don't yeah, want yeah, to. I'll, I'll just with the one you finish on, let's say. Um, so if you wanted to go back... Yeah. He's passing oh, something. Yeah. Ah. Oh, shit. Yeah. He's literally. You look behind you. There's the orange, and in front of you, there's the yeah. there's the yellow. If you if you decide to go back, you're fucked anyway. I'm gonna Ouch. I'm gonna keep moving. Okay. Oh deck, my okay. god. What else can I do? You know? Like, I, can you can you imagine the 16. Sultan cast this prismatic? Let's say fail. So I need you to take thirty three lightning damage. Oh, wait. Are we seeing this, by the way? Uh, yeah, you're seeing smoke, like, run through elemental chaos. Well, can you see Fire, through it? Can acid, you see into lightning. it? Yeah, they can oh, see, like, you, they can, okay. you, you basically, like, just got this tinted glass around you that's causing this damage as you try and run through it. Let's keep going. Can you keep going? Yeah. Another 16. <laughs> Hit me with another What's the point one. of stopping, eh? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say for the next one? 16 again. Yeah, it's a fail. So I need you to take 29 poison damage. Poison. Ooh. <laughs> God damn it, you're on the last one and we'll fucking banish you. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, you don't know. But after a certain point, that is more than half of my HP. That's How many layers did I move through? Red, orange, yellow. Yeah, you, That was the yellow one. Uh, no, you just did the you just did the poison one, didn't you? Yes. Uh, so you've just run through the Four. fourth layer. Oh, you're over halfway there. Yeah, but I think halfway there and half my health is enough that I would at least stop for a breather. So I will use my second wind at this point <laughs> and just take twenty back. Uh, I'm guessing Vida kind of sees me doing this and I just look at her like, shit, like, fuck. You sure you don't want to keep going? 
Not yet. Okay. Not all in one go. There's there's a limit to this perseverance in just one turn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's Vida's go. And we made the decision that Vida was going to attune to the Eye of Merzak. Now, the Eye of Merzak allows her to cast spells she wouldn't normally be able to do. So she sees you, Smoke, run through this hellish set of obstacles through this prismatic wall and she resolves to not attempt that and she looks towards the, the Grand Sultan and she just says you need to drop this prison and the eye starts to glow I need, I'm going to get the Sultan to make a, a wisdom saving throw. Hold on. Vita's spell save DC. Is I don't fucking know. I didn't know that was a number. Yeah, what spellcasters? Where's your spell save DC on your character sheet? I don't use on your spell on the spells on the tab top. at the top. Next to spell attack. Yeah, and I, I could, it's just not there on this one. What um sort of what is it as in? I just need a sp it, uh, her spellcasting ability is wisdom. So it's wisdom plus eight plus her proficiency bonus. Why plus yeah plus eight? Yeah, eight plus proficiency plus the spellcasting ability. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Um, right. It's just gone like rolling the dice, dot, 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 and not doing anything. <laughs> Keeping you in the uh, yeah. suspense. Yes. What are you doing, roll 20? Okay. Um, the Grand Sultan succeeds against the save. Uh, so just smiles at Vida. Vida's spell fails, even with the eye. Shit. Oh, no, wait. Hold on. I'm forgetting the whole point of the Eye of Merzak. There is no save. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is no save. Not, not for the Grand Sultan. What he's a idiot. native. He's, he's a, a native, native of the Plane of Fire. Plane of Fire. And thus, um, uh, the Grand Sultan's eyes turn yellow, just like Vida's. Nothing can happen yet. Tilly, what are you doing? Uh, I'm blind. Yes. So I'm going to rectify that on myself. I'm going to touch my eyes and I'm going to cast Lesser Restoration uh, to remove the blindness. Okay. And see what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's everything's shit. Um, would I can I can I make a perception check to see if I can see that Giselle is affected by this as well? Giselle's yeah. in a bottle on the floor that you can't see. Then I shall continue with what I was thinking and I will stand next to the closest statue. Okay. Uh and yeah, that's it for my turn. Sarkaros uh is going clubbing. With Jacob. Um, so we'll do these attacks once more. Oh. Um, two will hit. Uh, does a 24 hit you, Jacob? Yeah. A three will hit out of four. So 
Uh, the bite attack uh, is 22 piercing, no poison, no save. The claw attack is 17 slashing. And the tail attack is 23 bludgeoning as Sarkaros, tasting his own blood, uh, lunges at Jacob. And you can see him now unleashing this animalistic fury on Jacob. Guys, I'm in trouble. Um... Pillinelli would witness that. Um, what the shit would she do about it? Um, why'd I do this to myself? She would. She's brave. She's a knight of the ashen palm now. She's going to run up to Jacob. Uh, and she's going to cast a six level cure wounds. For 42 points of healing. Nice. Uh, she rushes over. She does like a baseball slide um, and kind of like holds a shield over the top to um, uh, fend off that mace attack that missed you. Um, and she grabs you by the scruff of the neck um, and she kisses you. And just says, we can't all die here. Come on. Um, and then pulls the shield back and stands next to you. Uh, so, reinvigorated. Jacob, what are you doing? Guys, we need a plan. I'm going to keep hitting the pit. I'm going to hit the pit fiend. Uh, uh, oh, that hurts. Yep. Um, 22, 21 da piercing damage. Mm hmm. Do you get the sneak attack because you're not moving? Um, there's no. Uh, and one, it's it's me versus that on his own. It's the one, it's the he's got no other enemies around him. So I'm okay. It's the swashbuckler weirdness. Mm -hmm. Second attack, eleven piercing, and the D eights for my dorm rack. I'll also oh sixteen. Nice. I'll also use a free action to mark him as my um favorite foe. A favorite foe. Mm -hmm. So he'll take seven favorite foe damage. Okay. And then third attack. Seventeen hit. Does not hit. Right. There we go. Okay. Grand Sultan's go. Um, choosing not to dispel the wall. Uh, he would maneuver around. He's not. He's not controlled by Vida. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, he um, he approaches. Sorry, yeah, he approaches the 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 wall and casts a ninth level dispel magic. What am I doing? Sorry, I'm getting there's too many things for me to keep track of. Oh shit! Yeah, because it's not even fucking concentration. He nope. couldn't just drop it, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> he had to dispel his own fucking spell. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh. You see now um, the Herald of Fire and the Vizier look confused as the Grand Sultan seemingly reverses the prison that he created for Vida and Smoke and does nothing else. Uh, 
it's, it's out of my turn, but I was my, um, maybe hoping for an inside check. Uh, their reaction, uh, I can ask for it in my turn. Their, their, their reaction seems like surprised. They don't realize what the gem actually did in the first place. You don't know. You can do the insight check on your turn. Um, so, uh, Mia, you do see, uh, yeah, a, a, a disjointed approach to this battle now between Balhotep, the Vizier, Sarkaros, and the Grand Sultan. You're muted currently. Okay. Uh, that, uh, right. Um, I will see that. That's good. But I'm going to have listened to what Jacob said and turn <laughs> back and point at the pit fiend and say... I said, go. I'm going to cast Banishment again on him. And he's going to roll a fucking 11. What's your DC? 20. He's going to roll 11. And it's a Wisdom save? Yep. Or is it Wizzy? Charisma. charisma. Hold on. Does he have plus 9 to his Charisma? No, he doesn't. I don't think he does. Oh, no. I think he is plus seven. Thanks, me. Poof. Back to one of the layers of hell. <laughs> Have to love the punishment, don't we? Yeah. Um, okay. Um. Yep. Oh. Uh. And I don't. Think I can do anything else mm -hmm. apart from that? Um, if Gisela is still blinded, I will just stay next to her and like. She's in the bottle. She's in the bottle. Oh, of course. She I is. made the same mistake. <laughs> Everybody wants to help Giselle, but she's like poof. Yeah, she's fine. Um, <laughs> then I'll just turn towards the Grand Sultan and see what is about to happen here. Okay. And that's it. Um, the vizier, incredulous that his pet pit fiend has been banished, is going to float down here and they are going to start lashing out at you, Mia. Um, so we will see. Uh, fuck that guy. Uh, watch. Oh no, your armor class might not be so good now. What is it? Seventeen. One hits for thirteen slashing damage. All right. Oh. DC. Yeah, I got that shield. Mhm. Mm DC ten Constitution saving throw. I know. Uh, okay, the Herald of Fire now then, uh, next to Jacob. Hello. Oh no, in fact, uh, now you're all in a row, in a line straight in front of him, he's going to do his uh, fire lance attack. Um, I need Mia, um, Giselle's in the bottle, so it doesn't matter, so Mia, Smoke, and Vida to make strength saving throws. Uh, sorry, I'm waiting for Vida to do one and it's fucking me. Um, hold on. Oh, she napped ones. Yay. Uh, so, um, Mia, you need to take 42 fire damage. <gasps> uh, Smoke, you take none. Um, and Giselle is protected by the bottle currently. Um, so, yeah, this, uh, the Herald of Fire, uh, Balhotep, he just like does this draconic roar, but it's like a <laughs> shooting surge of fire. Um, however, Giselle. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Does that mean? Does that mean my concentration drop? If it was forty-two damage and I only rolled a fifteen, is it not like half? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sarkros <laughs> is back. It would be twenty-one DC. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Poof. Oh no. Oh. Shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good, good call there. Good play, Kirsty, for reminding me there. Um, so, Giselle, um, you're blind in your bottle. Yeah, you I like. I like to think that there's been some sort of like just a play act. This that Kamoon is there, and he's yeah. giving a, like a running commentary on what's happening. Yeah, and, you can see he's like, oh. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, this is like a movie that I can't see. And then um, I think she will say, oh, f uh, I need to go and help them. And you, ha like, as part of our interaction, send me to Tilly and see if Kamun can help with that. Um, Kamun can help with that. Um, but he, before... Before he complies with your instructions, he'll say, Lady Giselle, I can send you out of the bottle to your friend, but if you release me, I could be even more help. That, oh, I can't even really react, can I? Because it's not much of an interaction. I can only get a small statement, right? Um... Well, so yeah, uh, He's just letting you know that, but you, what you've asked to do is to be uh, released over here. Mm. Uh, so he'll do that for you, but bear in mind that he wants you to know that he wants to help. Okay, all right, cool. Okay. It's the end of my turn. I'm still blinded. Uh -huh. But now I'm next to Tilly. Okay. Yep. Uh, smoke. Uh, all that fucking weird magic shit uh, was dispelled. Then you got hit by a massive surge of fire. What the fuck are you doing? Um, I will... Laughing fireproof. 5, 10, 15. Mm -hmm. I'll leap towards Balhotep. And I shall attempt to strike him with my Tinder Strike blade. Mm -hmm. 30. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. Um, ten piercing for fire. I'm going to add a maneuver on this. So, so the fire damage piercing. seems to do not nothing. Yeah. Okay. No problem. So just the nineteen piercing and the maneuver. Uh, let me check what save it is. I think it's wisdom. Um. Yes. If you could make a wisdom saving throw, please. Whenever okay. I change to my features page and look through all my maneuvers, if I go out and then go back into it, it changes the order of them all. It's so, so annoying. annoying. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so he's going to... Uh, he fails his wisdom save. Okay, great. So um, it is goading attack, which means that he has disadvantage on all attack rolls against targets other than me. I'm going to... Put a right turn. Five. So twenty. He's going to use his legendary resistance to succeed. Okay. Um. Well, would I sort of know that as I try it? Do you know what I mean? Do I see him uh, yeah. You, it off? Well, you you're trying to goad it. You wouldn't know whether he would attack you or not. So, do you know what I mean? Whether okay, whether I'll, he's yeah, drawn I'll, to you or not. I'll I'll leave it with that one. Um. Uh -huh. I was I'll still continue with my plan. 20, 25, 30, 35. Uh, I'm going to do a similar thing. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> he doesn't get an attack of opportunity, does he? Because of the mobile. The mobile feet, yeah. uh -huh. uh, okay. How about a 20 for this guy? Yeah, it hits. Nice. Eight person. Seven does uh, fire work against this guy? Uh, it seems to have zero effect. Okay. I'm going to try the same maneuver on him. Less likely because I know he's got a big wisdom save, but I'll give it a try. Where is he? Yes, advantage on. Yeah, he succeeds. And one more. So that hits eight person. Got to go with another mm -hmm. maneuver to make that 16. 
and with this one he's got he's gonna have a good shot at this as well but uh yeah let's try it strength save cool plus 20 or something uh what's the dc 19. uh it's not a magical effect is it no it's a move. No. so he fails Nice. I've knocked the mace out of his hand. Oh. <laughs> oh. Disarming attack. It's a huge, huge mace. So that was uh, one, two, three maneuvers. Nice. On that turn. Okay. And I think that'll be it. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's Vida's turn. <laughs> Uh, Vida is going to shout towards the Grand Sultan. You need to turn my friends back. That's all she does. Shouting towards the Grand Sultan. Tilly, what are you doing? Uh, I was just about to uh, unfreeze this statue right here, but then uh, Giselle popped up into mm -hmm. existence right there in front of me, and I, are you okay? What, what's going on? And uh, I will um, cast lesser restoration on her too, seeing as she's can't see that. Is mm -hmm. my action though? Um, no longer blind, Giselle. That is my action, and that was a spell. Uh, so, nothing else I can do. Yeah, so I'll just leave it. Okay. Having been disarmed, Sarkaros snorts um still got claws um so he's gonna try and bite smoke uh does a 27 hit you smoke yep <laughs> then i need you to take 18 piercing damage uh i need you to make a constitution save okay Nice. Um, hold on. Yeah. Okay. You avoid. You avoid the poison effect. Uh, good. Uh, as you seem to shrug it off, uh, he's going to do uh, a claw attack against you. As an eighteen hit you? No. Nope. No, and then he's going to bring his tail around and try and hit Jacob. Yay. Uh, that will hit you, Jacob, for 21 bludgeoning damage. I'll uncanny dodge to half that. Mm -hmm. uh, How many uncanny dodges do you get? One reaction per turn. Per turn, cool. So one reaction per round, so it's per round. round. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um... That's Sarkaros's goat. Uh, Pellinelli. Um, what the fuck is she going to do? She's used a six level big boy spell. <laughs> um, God damn it. She. What can she do? She's got all kinds of freaky dark magic spells. Uh, she is going to try and cast slow on Sarkaros. Ooh, that's a good fucking spell. Okay. I don't know it. Is it like the opposite of haste? Pretty much, I, yeah. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Uh, it would so... only be Making one attack with the turn. It's pretty good yeah. for him, especially Bruce. Um, he's got to make a whizzy. 
Oh, he's going to succeed. Yeah. Poor Pillinelli's spell DC just isn't high enough to cope with a pit fiend. All right, get back to school, Pillinelli. Yeah. Uh, okay. Jacob. Pit fiend seems to be the uh, most dangerous target here. So I'm going to continue and attack the pit fiend. No, sorry, that's the wrong... I don't know why I clicked that. I clicked completely the wrong thing. It's all right. We can keep the natural one. <laughs> why wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. Make a deck save. <laughs> I clicked the wrong one. Don't, 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 don't punish me for it. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Just miss the first attack. 20 to hit. Just hits. Take 20 piercing damage. Now, do you still get the sneak attack even though smoke's engaged? I do for the standard sneak. Uh, right. Oh, yeah, okay. The, the normal reasons. <laughs> normal. Okay. Those are crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's good damage. 23 to hit. Yeah. Uh, so that's 11 piercing uh, plus the 1d8, because he's my favorite. Three for favored foe. Mm hmm. Plus. I'll. But pump in as well. He uh, takes 3d6, st 11 storm rack thunder damage. Mm, he's probably I'll wishing he hadn't come back at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'll, burn a I'll burn a third level spell yeah. slot as well. And do. Uh, he literally went home. He was like sipping tea with his wife. Nine, just like. <laughs> no! Or his mum! Yeah. Zarkaros, you never come home anymore. It's so good to see you. If you give us a bit of notice, we'd have made up the spe- Zarkaros? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, 19 thunder damage on top of that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, jump, leaping to Smoke's defense and taking advantage of Zarkaros, uh, his lack of his mace. Yeah, you uh, now uh, teaming up on him big time. Uh, that's that the end of your game. Smoke. Come on, smoke, we got this. Yeah, that's cool. what we're doing. Well, yes. um, under Vida's instruction, the Grand Sultan is going to bring back the Knights of the Ashen Palm. Wow, all of them at once? All of them at once. It's fucking Grand Sultan, so I. Exactly. Uh, so. Does anyone else feel like if Kirsty didn't make that decision to use the eye, we'd all be dead right now? Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's certainly it, this battle would have been a lot harder. <laughs> I mean, we, we had two people completely isolated from the rest. Two Jacob, blind people. And Jacob took 130 points of damage in a round. And... Yeah. From, from yeah. what I've been. They might not have put them in a prism if Vida hadn't put the eye in her eye, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Pro pro probably use something more damaging instead, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mia, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to cast. Um, beacon of hope on me and some buddies and hope that Tilly clocks it and I'll be using it anyway. Um, so that's any number of creatures within range, which is 30 feet. So that is um, Beta, Jacob, Pillinelli and Smoke. I don't like, I don't think Giselle and Tilly are within range of me. We're not hurt. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, sure. I'll stay squared up to this grand vizier coward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I can't do any bonus actions. Okay. Now it's at this point that <laughs> Abdul. Kawi, the Grand Vizier, 
begins to realize what's happening. He's just seen this spell be undone, not only the prismatic wall, but the uh, statues. He noticed the eye in her. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get closer to Vida. Holy shit. His MO is to get his master to safety. However, he may not come willingly. Let's see. Um, yeah. Uh huh. Um, yes. <laughs> sorry, I'm Do talking to myself. Um, you see the Grand Vizier grab on uh, covetously to his master's shoulders as his master kind of twinkles in and out of this domination. Not able to act under his own steam, but also not being completely under the direction of somebody else. Uh, he says... Come on, Master. It's not safe for us here anymore. Maybe we should go and visit the Plain of Water. <laughs> and yep. uh, teleports him yep. and the Grand Sultan out of there. Unless anyone's got anything they can, can do, I do against it. Can I do anything? I can't. Cast a spell as a react. Oh wait! Oh no! I can't use an attack of opportunity if they're teleporting, can I? No, you can't. Is is he using plane trip <laughs> or like? He's using a special ability called extra plane of travel. Oh fuck! Just skip to oh, a fuck different the players. Way. Which means the sultan uh... they're the influence anymore. Uh. The Vizier can transport itself to the Astral Plane, Ethereal Plane, or any of the Elemental Planes. Um, I'm not going to tell you how long for. During this time, they're protected against any negative effects from being on that plane or that, that uh, linger from the plane they left from. Um, hmm. And you can do that with up to six creatures of its choosing. Uh, and obviously, it's just choosing one. I can't use my divine intervention as a reaction, can I? And ask Mister to stop them. What I would ask usually, just as I did ask myself with Giselle trying to escape uh, into the bottle, is would it be cool if, if Mister cool. stepped? It'd be so Mistress, cool if Mister put like a big in. palm down to be like, "No, you're not going. Don't be cowards." Also, it might not work. I mean, divine intervention is a. Hail Mary, isn't it? In any yeah, case, it's unlikely, but I'll give it to you. You can have a go. Everyone, yeah. come on! Come... Oh, Ow, fuck! Are well, you level fifty-four cleric, right? Mr. Yeah, she definitely yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> Soon I'm going to be a level twenty, and I have to roll for this shit. Mister just says, "Yeah, okay." Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't do anything. They are, oh, no. they are gone. What pair so, of them went? But we um, don't know how long for, so they might be back. Could be back. Yeah, you, they disappear. You don't know where they've gone, what they're doing. Um, it's now the Herald of Fire. Let's go, Valhotep. Is he faced at all by what just fucking happened? Um, he's a pretty fearsome. <clears throat> he's a pretty fearsome foe, and he hasn't been using all of his <clears throat> potential yet. So, he is. Uh, in fact, uh, mere. Kirsty, just roll me a d6. You don't want a 5 or 6. Oh, shit. Nice. You're all right. Okay. Uh, he's going to step forward. Uh, one for Jacob, one for Mir. Fireclaw. Oh, Jacob. 
wouldn't you know, I critted. Oh. Um, I'll undo it. Yeah. You know, undo it with your reaction? Oh, I'll let you use your yeah. divine intervention as a reaction. Um, I have got my oh, reaction yeah. back, so I will uncanny dodge this. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, so, goodness, <laughs> it would be uh, 22 slashing and 7 fire halved. So 11 and 3, 14. Mm -hmm. You've not hit me yet, have you? Or tried to hit me? No, I'm going to do that now, though, if that's all right. <laughs> no, sure, actually, sure. I decided no. Categorically uh, not alright. I'm going to hit you with an 18. Oh. No! 12 slashing and 7 fire. Alright. Um... He's going to up the ante. Uh, I need... Uh, both those people are just hit um, to make a uh, constitution saving throws. I'm going to make two because I've realized I've got to make one for my spell. So I'll make the first one for my spell and then the second one for you. Okay. Uh, you pass both. However, Jacob, you are ignited. Remember that condition? <laughs> yeah, it's a great condition, just on fire. Yeah, take <laughs> seven fire damage and you're on fire. Oh. Do you have any non-magical shit that is just burned off? <laughs> Pardon? Is that part of the same attack? Yeah, when he hits twice uh, on the same turn, which is what he did, any targets that he hits, he can force to make a con so save. Does the uncanny dodge work with that as well? No, no, it doesn't. You don't. You don't half the extra effect. You just half. Okay. You half the initial attack. Oh, stop, drop, and roll. Okay, I don't know if you want to do some kind of symbol to just remind us that you're on fire, um, or you know you can scream until the start of your next turn. Um, Giselle. Yep. Um. Bonus action. Um. Come on, come on. It's time. Come and help. Gonna summon um, Kamoon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me go get him. Where did I leave him? Somewhere else. Don't you hate it when you leave your powerful genie in your other trousers? Yeah, I'm always forgetting to take my <laughs> Dao out with me. <laughs> Hold on. That's funny. Here he is. I'm just going to say he acts at the end of your turn, if that's okay. Okay. Um, and then action, moonbeam. Oh, yeah. Where's that going? Did you say, oh, of course. Is it called Imhotep? Because that's the guy Val from the Mummy. Valhotep. Val okay, Val yeah, him. C close, though. Valhotep. Val um, yeah. Is it a... Is it a 10 foot radius sphere or five foot only radius five sphere? i think yeah five okay. do you want to draw it for me do you know how to do that um can i have a go uh how would it work because he's covering four so i just want one of those um Sorry, a five foot radius means that it's going to be like this. So you can position. We can cover it. Oh, can you get rid of what I've just done? Um, yeah, cover it over him. Okay, yeah, because he's a large creature. Um, get rid of what I've just done. So I I can't see what you've just done. I'm not sure. It's a little per per oh, I can see it. Sorry. Hold on, let me... <laughs> ah, now I'm drawing shit, sure. hold on. Do you guys remember when Tisha did this and Smoke turned into a werewolf? Good times. Yes, in the live <laughs> game. 
I did actually check with Kirsty last time I did it, just because I was like, will something happen if... Because I didn't know what happened. So, uh, you are uh, asking him to make what a con save. Okay. Uh, he's going to succeed, roll the 19. Um, does, it, what, does it half damage? I think it does. Yep, half as much damage on a successful one. 14. Okay. Um, and that's the end of mine. And it's going to stay there and I'm going to stay where I am and it's Kamoon's. Okay, going. what do you want Kamoon to do? Oh, um, do his, live his life, his best life. Are you releasing him from his bonds or are you letting him help you? What was the implication when he said it to me? Like, he can really help you if you release him. Oh, oh, well, then, it, but, then it's time. Uh, yeah, it's, if it, it's he time. wants to, yeah, like, let's do it. It's part okay. of the fight. Then he turns to you, and something that he's been embarrassed to show you before is uh, it kind of holds out his hands, and then you can see um a set of silver manacles appear over his wrists and he holds them out to you. And I put this magic key in. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. No. You, you, there could be a key on the bottle charm. That's fine. <laughs> and release him and say, you, I grant you your freedom. P.S. Don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> You hear like, oh, from Tilly behind you. <laughs> as, you, as soon as you put the key in and turn the lock, the key disappears, as do the shackles. Um, and you feel uh, the earth beneath you begin to shake as the great Kamun seems to grow in stature. Um, muscles rippling and cracking and fracturing like rocks uh, under pressure. Uh, his eyes turn into like shining purple gems. Uh, and yeah, he is uh, going to leap to your assistance. Hold on. Do you want to do? Uh, do you want to get the Dow stat block up, Lucy? Um, if you go, you know, like how you used to do for the Dire Wolf. Yeah, Lucas found that for me. <laughs> if you just go in D and D Beyond, just type D A O. When you say go in, what at the top? Yeah, just in the search bar, D A O. Found it? Yeah, monsters, Dow monsters. Yeah. Dow compendium. Uh, Bottle genie. I'm nope. not sure. Uh, Literally, it was the first thing that came up. I'll put the. Okay, Dow monsters then. There uh, you go. I've put it, the link in the chat. You're just looking for the stat block. Oh, he's so cool looking. Yep, I got it. Okay, so uh, you can. He's gonna. He's he's not gonna go straight into casting a spell, but just bear in mind he can cast all of those spells that you can see: pass wall, invisibility, wall of stone, yada yada yada. Okay. But uh, he is gonna make two fist attacks or two more attacks, your choice, as he goes to rush Balhotep. So you can roll those attacks if you want. Uh, two fist attacks is what he's gonna do. Gonna fist. Balhotep. Well, you make that sound different. Uh, do I need <laughs> to click on him first? Just click on the... It should do exactly the same as with the other ones. You don't have to click on any token. Oh, Just okay, click on cool. where it says fist. There you go. Uh, let's have a look if any of them hit. Well, an 18 and 16, guys. They Come both on. hit, so click damage. Eight. There you go. 24 damage for the Herald of Fire. Decent. 
Hey. Uh, okay. That's Kamoon's go. End of uh end of everybody's turn. Smoke. Uh, Still a pit fiend here. Yep. I will keep striking. Oh shit, not with a nat one. Make yourself a deck save. Not a lover sword. <laughs> okay, You're fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two in one it's a dagger to the strike, two. just yeah, for clarity. Um, but yeah, Sarkaros gets hit by that next attack. Uh, damage on that one, nine betting. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more. Like mm-hmm. Four. Um, I will put a maneuver on this as well. So just thirteen. And it is. Where are we? Uh, oh, I don't think there is a save on this one. Uh, distracting strike. Target by attacker other than me has advantage if it's made before the start of my next turn. Okay, so next attack on Sarkaras has advantage. Yes. Uh, that is one, two, three. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. Uh, Vida, like, Kyle looks like she's got a headache. This magical connection that she just made, um, she uh, kind of struggles to um, kind of disconnect and uh, shaking her head. She goes back to what she knows. Uh, She is going to uh, move out of the way of the massive Dow run uh, up behind Pillinelli, uh, springboard off the top of Pillinelli and land in front of the Pit Fiend. Uh, she's going to make an attack at advantage on the way down because the Pissar Cross is distracted. Uh, so uh, she's going to just do an unarmed strike. Uh, which will hit for 27 for 15 bludgeoning damage. And then she's going to do another attack. Yeah, that'll hit as well for another 12. All right. Uh, Tilly. Are you going to... um... Roll initiative for all the other Ashen. No, they're going to go on Pillinelli's turn. Pillinelli's turn, great. So uh, I kind of just move forward and say to Giselle, like, this is looking a lot better now. Uh, And then looking at all of them over there, I shall throw in any muscular wounds on... Eighth level, meaning it is maximum of six times eight, 48? Uh, 52. 50, it was 50, well. 52 uh, to all of this group uh, around here. Mir, Jacob, Smoke? Mir, Jacob, Vida. Smoke, and Vida, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think Pillan because... was hurt. No, P- Vida wasn't hurt either, but... Yep, so the three of you, 52 hit points. Amazing. Brilliant. Um, sure, that was um, that was an eighth level. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, for now that's it. I'm just watching to see what, okay. what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarkaros is go. He's stupid, but now got this kind of animalistic fear overcomes him. Um, he's gonna. What can he do? Yeah. 
It's risky, but he's going to do it. Uh, he's going to fly up and away. So any reactions that need to be taken, you can take them if you want. Fuck him up. Vida will try and hit him, and will, for 10 bludgeoning damage. Anybody else? Yeah, Jack is going to try and hit him. It's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Miss. Well. What was his range? It's only with it if he's within melee range of you. Oh. Yeah, so uh, the 11 piercing will hit. Uh, thankfully, Jacker didn't get him, so he survives long enough to fly up and chuck a fireball back down. Oh, no! <gasps> oh! <laughs> 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 with the fireball. All Am I not muted? Nothing. <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm on caps lock all the time. Okay, we're going to do a deck save, folks. Oh, no. I mean, I'll make it, but... Uh, yeah, me and oh, Gis Giselle are out of it? Uh, no, Mir's in there. Sorry, Tilly and Giselle are nowhere near the fireball. That's fine. Uh, smoke fails. Mir fails. Jack of passes. Uh, Pillanelli passes. Um, okay, hold on. Fucking bastard. Uh, so if you failed, you need to take 41 fire damage. Oh, uh, my and Jesus. Obviously, 20 God. if you passed. Uh, you can do it. You can keep concentration. I believe in you, Kirsty. Everyone Just... has to believe in me. Just for a minute. Just oh, like 30 seconds. Easy 20. Yeah. Easy 20. Easy peasy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, this is going to so need yeah. another beacon of hope. It's about 25 feet in the air. Uh, okay. Pillinelli's go. Yikes. What is she going to do? <laughs> what is she going to do? Uh, she's going to cast Fairy Fire at him. I like them. That's a good one. That makes me happy. Yeah. I've played a bard. I know what they would do. <laughs> so um, juice. <laughs> no, they don't do any of that shit. That's just for memes. Um, hold on. <laughs> oh, what save is very fire? Uh, it's Dex safe. Dex. Thank you. Question is, is Pillanelli's spell safe high enough? Probably not. Well, we know it's crap, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, he it, it, it succeeds. Pillanelli needs to go back to Bard College, clearly. Ooh. Hey, oh, everyone has a drink. You have any drink? <laughs> he did not graduate in the <laughs> highest distinction, yeah. for sure. Never mind. Uh, okay, Jacob. Uh, right. Well, so sword draws bow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to um, use my bonus action to steady aim to give myself advantage on the shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and 28 to hit him. Sure. Uh, that um, fifteen piercing damage. Mm -hmm. uh, second shot. Go miss. No, oh, no. Boom. Never mind. Is that the uh, end of your shots? I think it is, isn't it? 
That is the end of my shots. That's the end of my turn, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mia. This, uh, yeah. this Herald of Fire is still bathed in this damaging moonlight held by Giselle as Kamoon punches left and right. Uh, what are you doing? I'm going to look up the thing that just rained fire. The dummy that just mm-hmm. rained fire down. How bad is he looking? Oh, yeah, he's got arrows sticking out of him, cuts, and he looks fearful like he's trying to get away. Okay. Um... All right, I'm going to cast a third level guiding bolt on him. Okay, now it'll be at disadvantage because because you're within five feet. That's not good enough to hit him, I'm afraid. Why was it a disadvantage? Sorry. Because you're within five feet of a hostile enemy. Oh, I always forget that stupid rule. Um... <laughs> stupid. It's fine, it I'm here stupid. to remind you. I think it makes perfect sense. <laughs> You've got to do all this kind of weird shit while there's someone stood next to you trying to hit Try, Trying to hit you just... in the face. Just... Wait. Uh... All right, that's fine. I will stay where I am. <laughs> Having not done what I wanted to do. Thanks, okay. everyone. <laughs> right. You did the roll. <laughs> no, we did nothing. <laughs> roll me a d6. Get a 5 or 6, just for me. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not that salty. I know. Oh, Jacob, you don't get I asked you to remind me earlier. <laughs> you were on fire, were you not? Yes, I am. And you didn't oh, use yeah. your action to put yourself out, so take another seven fire damage, please. Okay. Um, so, some fire claws. Um, Kamun and Mia are going to take some fire claws. Uh, what's the AC for Kamun there, Lucy? Armor class 18. Uh, okay, that misses Kamoon. Uh, a 16, does that miss you as well, Mia? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, both of his bullshit attacks <laughs> miss. Uh, he's not looking great. Uh, it's up to you now, Giselle. Uh, what, he didn't move? Uh, no, he didn't. Um, okay. He's... Locked. He would get lots of attacks of opportunities if he moved. <laughs> he could stay where he is then, uh, and I won't use my action to move Moonbeam to follow him. Um, Does he get but... hurt at the start of his turn? Or something? Oh yeah, yeah. So I've got to do the save then, right? Well, you know what? I don't think so because when I cast it, we did damage then, so ah. that would be the start of his turn. So next time, it's the, okay. the start of his turn. That just makes it fair. Yeah. I'm um, Thank you. Okay. Well, that just throws everything out. Um. Um. What's happening with the guy at the top with the wand and the wings? Uh, he's trying mace. to fly away. Uh, he hasn't even got that mace because he was disarmed. No. He didn't pick he's it up. A, he's, he's literally just like, yeah, he's Flapping. trying to fly away. Uh, he looks very injured. Um. Um. Okay. Uh. So my 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 thing was gonna gonna send the dog out but if he's in the air that's not going to do anything no. um can, I, can, can a person the dog just appears and falls <laughs> let's land on him <laughs> um i this poor dog it's always the same one as well you always yeah, call he's back sick the same of one. Giselle's shit already <laughs> everybody's leaving her um uh right um i'm going to use I don't know if this is going to work. We're just going to do it anyway. I'm going to use bonus action, Draconic Transformation, which will give me flight. Is it a concentration spell? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yes, 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 yes. Well done. Oh, fuck. I've got, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay. Um, then in, I know what I'm something. doing. Shoot I'm it. using, yeah, I'm using the, 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 the circle thing um, and aiming that at, in the air. Okay, what is what is the range on the witch's circle? You're pretty far. 60 slash 20, oh, 120. Oh, yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah. 
Uh, so go on, roll to hit. What oh, fourteen's not good enough. Um, it comes back to your hand, doesn't it? It, it does come back. It's a yeah. boomerang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That fucked up. So bonus action. Out. Heck, does that do anything? Uh, Hex is concentration too. Fuck! I why do I choose these? Um, I can't do anything. Um, except move into the battle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna move in a little bit, but I think I like Moonbeam doing most of the damage from a distance. To be honest, so I'm gonna go there. Sorry, I didn't move. Go f with my Drow pals. They uh, they'd just be converging, having just come round. Uh, mm. Smoke. Okay, I'm going to turn my attention to Balhot up. Uh huh. Yeah, got to finish him. Got that sweet advantage from flanking. Sweet flanking. Yes, Fuck yes. him up. Fuck him up. F oh, oh fuck. Um, there's going to be a maneuver on this as well. Of course there is. So, oh, not not amazing crit, but. Uh, I'd like him to make a wisdom save. Uh, the D D ten is doubled as well, right? Because it's a crit. Oh, it is, yeah. So I rolled a well. twenty two wisdom. Okay, I'll succeed. Uh, so yeah, so it was thirteen, twelve, twenty five on the first attack. Mm, with a dagger. <laughs> yeah, 17. it's pretty great. <laughs> uh, seventeen. I think that does hit. Yeah. Ooh. Just nine person on that one. Do you mm -hmm. don't do any fire that oh is he immune? Yeah, it doesn't do fire damage. Yeah, right. we're ignoring yeah. that for now. Um well, I'll put my last maneuver into that one. And um, we'll have him make a strength save. Okay. Uh DC nineteen. He succeeds. Okay. Uh, pretty good at saves this guy. Yeah. One more. 29 for Hits. another 8 damage. Okay. Starting to get the better of Balhotep. Ah! Uh, and you know what? Bonus action shield master shove. I'm still going to try and knock him over. Okay. Might even be a bit better chance than, than rather with the maneuver with this. Ah, oh, no, maybe not. 15. Is that a contested roll? Yeah, it's the same as a grapple. Uh, he fails. Oh, nice. He's it did work on then. his butt. Yeah, yeah, knock him prone. Cool. If... <laughs> can he can he go prone? Let's just see. Mm. Uh, yes, he can. Nice. Yes, he can. Yes, he it's can. My turn. Very good. All right. Jacob will finish him. The fuck or is Eda gonna do? Shouldn't got any ranged attacks. Um, so she's going to run next to Malhotep. Uh, yeah, she'll just do what she always does. One attack will hit for eight damage. All right, Tilly. Yep, I will throw in another uh, muscular wounds in the mix. Uh, level six this time. Uh, so that's four times eight, thirty-two plus four, thirty-six heal hit points to Mir, Smoke, and Jacob. How much was it? Sorry. Uh, thirty-six. Thirty-six. Cool. Is Pillinelli Pil still not taking any damage, or Vida? She she did take oh, damage. She, she did in the fireball, didn't she? Yeah. So yeah. it's up to six people. So you ah. can add that. Uh, but um, Pillinelli wasn't under Beacon of Hope. She was. She, she was. was. Okay. So then, yeah, thirty-six to her and yeah. Vida if she needs. It. She is feeling better. Yeah, um, we forgot to play Camoon after, um, um Giselle. 
Did we? I did. <laughs> you purposely? Um, you choose. If you, if you want to do a couple... It, it, well, what do you want Kamun to do? I want him... Oh, I did have this and then I completely forgot. I want him to cast Phantasmal Killer. Shit. <laughs> fuck. Okay. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, do you want to just Wait. put that spell up in the old chat there? Oh, how do I do it from here, though? You you can't. You have to find it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me uh, let me try that one second. What the fuck is that? You tap into the nightmares of a creature you can see within range and create an illusory <clears throat> manifestation of its deepest fears visible only to that creature. The target must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the target becomes frightened for the duration. At the end of each of the target's turns before the spell ends, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Oh, my God. John, have you used that spell on us before? You know, when you were... Oh, what one shot it's was it? snake thing. It sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm definitely familiar with it. I've used it. Phantasmal Killer. Okay, so this is being cast by Kamun on Balhotep. Balhotep's got to make a whizzy. Is that right? Uh-huh. If What's he fails it, will you tell us his nightmare? Oh, how do I... Um... Oh, the Dow spell save DC. Um, it says it's fourteen in the stat block, and I rolled a sixteen, so it succeeds. Oh no! And what happened if it didn't? Uh... If it didn't, it would become frightened. The, on a successful yeah. spell save, the spell ends. Save, the spell ends. Yeah. yeah so it just so... doesn't nothing happen. Yeah, nothing happens. I'm afraid. Okay. All right. Had to give would have been go. cool though, because I've got <laughs> yeah. some ideas about what Balhotep's deepest fears would be. Well, yeah, I was interested myself. Cool. Yeah. Never mind. Um, okay, so Tilly was at the end of your go. So that's yep. Yeah. So Sarkaros is still alive, and he can still fireball the shit out of you. Oh no. Um. So somebody killed that fucking guy. He just it can. Pit fiends can fireball at will. <laughs> There's not even <laughs> spell slots. They can just be like, fuck you. <laughs> so that's what he's going to do. Um, I need deck saves from a lot of you. Doesn't matter if Balhotet's immune to all fire damage. So I, I guess it doesn't really matter for smoke same, either. Same here, yeah. <laughs> same here mate. Fucking <laughs> yeah, all. <laughs> not arse, mate. <laughs> Deck saves a kind of Jacob's thing. Oh, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh, it's Vida, Pellinelli. Where does he throw it exactly? Because I think it can go up to like 20 feet. Uh, it will just get everybody in that cluster. Um, cool. Hold on. Not me then, Giselle, no. Out of it. You'd just be out of it. Just. Uh, okay. Um, so if you fail, mm -hmm. uh, which Mia and Pellinelli did, uh, you're going to take 49 fire damage. Oh my god. I, 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 oh my god, I can't so... hear you quick enough. So I yeah. need... What do I need? A 24 con save? That's possible. You've got other It's possible. Yeah, but it but, doesn't work. But it, it poke is down. Go, Sarkaros. It's somewhere in one of the layers of hell. There's some pit fiend cheerleaders all singing his name. That's right, Lucy. Um, <laughs> he is, he'll fly a bit further away. Um, Laughs in long bed. Okay. Where's my turn? Finish him. Finish him. Uh, now it's the drows go. All of them. Would it be really cool if they all stood together and attacked Sarkaros together? Yeah. yeah. As the Knights of the Ashen Palm? Cool. Probably would be, wouldn't it? Sounds like exactly what they're going to do to me. So, bear with me one second. Uh, 
Uh, now then. Dawn is going to step in where Pillanelli failed and cast Fairy Fire. Um, which this time, let's see, Dex is going to fail. Nice. Nice. Yeah, he rolled real low. So he's illuminated. And then Celine, Darthrus, and Sorn. Uh, Celine is going to do a. Why did why did she pick Fireball? Why uh, she's <laughs> going to pick? Um, what's she going to do? She must have something that's not fire. Yeah, she does. She's going to cast Innovation. Oh. Uh, so I need another deck save. Hold on. Oh, shit. I rolled a four. Uh, so, uh, Lucas, can you just roll me 4d6? Yeah. D6. Ooh, it's a good roll. 18. Okay. What you would see um, is uh, illuminated by this magic as the Pit Fiend tries to escape into the cavernous shadows of the uh, top of the charcoal throne. Uh, Pillanelli's like, uh, not so fast, uh, before Celine casts uh, Innovation. Uh, which seems to wither and wilt. Um, Jacob, seeing as it's your turn next, we're going to give you the coup de grace. Oh. Uh, if you want to use it, an attack against it. Yeah, cool. But, and the others got turns first, though. Yeah, no, no, you, you go for it. Bow, 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 because it's little, like, 21 to hit. Yeah, roll damage. 17. Yeah, how do you dispatch Sarkaros? As it withers and dies and sort of starts to fall, Jack of Draws and an arrow straight into the, um, sort of the clavicle of it. Okay. As you draw that bow from over the top of Smoke's shoulder and destroy Sarkaros, you see, like, the, the arrow goes straight through him and his wilted body warped by this innovation spell. Uh, you see that, like, uh, his bones start to, like, crumble to ash. It's not that he's being destroyed. It's almost like he's being pulled back to hell. Uh <laughs> But the whole time, as his body is decomposing into ash before you, you see his the smile never leaves his face. Um, he, he's going home, back to his wife. Going home. <laughs> However, uh, one, in, in an explosion of ash, uh, I'm going to get Smoke. Uh, you'd be the closest player character. I'm going to get you to make a deck save. Yeah, so that's, that was the DC. Um, lucky. Uh, a coin is now tumbling through the air near you. Oh, oh catch that. Ping. You've nice. seen a coin like this before. Hey, we can get an engine now. <laughs> <laughs> Undetermined soul coin. Uh, you, can, you can type Sarkaros soul coin if you want. Oh, it's his soul specifically. Uh, okay, Jacob, you've got another attack, haven't you? I do, yeah. You've got your bow drawn. Yeah. Actually. Uh, that shot should have been it. Well, it was lit up, so it was a straight yeah. roll. It was advantage. Fine. Well, yeah. I've got this guy next to me, so it should have been 
It's arranged. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's fine. It's done. It's done. All right. I'm gonna turn. He's on. He's prone as well. By the way. Oh. Mm -hmm. the guy I've got my bow drawn, so I know it's disadvantage to just <laughs> shoot him in the face. I love it. I love it. Yeah. What disadvantage? <laughs> well, I can use high. my bonus action steady aim to. Uh... Yeah. Make it a straight roll. Straight, straight roll. roll. Shoot him in the face. I love it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and I will. Uh, I'll move my hunter's mark to him as well. So we'll take 11 piercing from that, a d8 from the hunter, from favoured foe, two, and I'll pump in, might as well pump in the third level spell slot. Make it uh, 22 points of thunder damage. Nice. Okay. Uh, as you step back and like pull back your bow for the maximum torque you, the thunder the thunder uh kind of loaded into this arrow uh echoes around the hallway and there's like a few uh charcoal uh stones uh kind of fall from the ceiling uh and now you you aim this arrow like right at the base of Balhotep's skull and it goes flat onto the ground and coughs uh, what look like kind of ash and smoke as his claws are uh, clutched into the ground. Is that the end of your go, Jacob? Is that your two attacks? That is my turn, yeah. Then Mir, this uh, creature now cowers before you, still bathed in this moonlight, looking all but finished. What are you doing? I'm going to crouch down and say to him, it's okay. You are loyal to the end, right? I'm going to touch him and cast Inflict Wounds. Oh, oh brutal. And face melted. Brutal. Yeah, that, how do you, uh, well, you just melt him out of existence? Yeah, I kind of want it to look almost like a ten, like quite a tender touch, mm -hmm. but it to fucking hurt. Yeah, he, you see, like he he listens, hopefully, for a word of consolation, and in his loyalty, he realizes that he was nothing but a pawn. Uh and his, as his skin boils and his scales burn, he uh, is reduced to a smouldering puddle on the floor as your violet and pink eyes flicker and dim back to normal. Does the puddle evaporate in the mm -hmm. moonbeam as well afterwards? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, and that is the last hostile creature on the board. Probably the Sultan ran away. Did he run away? Or was he dragged away? Um, so. Okay, I don't want to alarm anybody, but there's a storm coming here. <laughs> the guy he was after is not here. What's Vida like right now? Yeah. Uh, she's like holding her head. Uh, which is looking around and the Knights of the Ashen Palm like come to her. Um, um, they're all checking if she's okay. Uh, but she just doesn't seem to hear them at the moment. Smoke your closest. What? Is there anything you wanted to do? Or? I'll just kind of kneel down, put a hand on the shoulder and ask her, are you okay? If I... If I have the power over him now that I think I do, I don't think the Sultan can return here. But that's only as long as I'm here. What the hell should I do? I don't know. 
Vida, you were look. You said before you were looking for a chance to do good. Maybe this is it. Um, these people, Kirsty. What does Vida do now? Oh man. Um. I think. Does she? She knows about the storm. She knows about her father coming, right? Uh, she knows as much as you guys do. Yeah. I think she'd go and find the nearest window and see if she can, like, somehow take control of him as someone that was born on the fire plane to stop him from whatever he's about to do. So she uh, rushes alongside the Knights of the Ashen Palm to a, a tall spiral staircase at the at the far end of the throne room that kind of branches off into a upper quarter where you can see the evidence of some light uh, coming through. It takes a little while to get there. Is everybody going with it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, it's a it's a, a strenuous journey. This this palace is massive. Um, but. As you get onto the top, you can see like there's windows and doorways that open out onto like the roof, and there's like a whole platform, like circular brass platform on the top of the charcoal palace. And uh, as you kind of look out uh, from the rooftop, you can see uh, there's like ash and stones beginning to fall. Uh, like as if you were in the midst of a volcanic eruption. And as you look up, you now see this like uh, dark roiling cloud that like is just stretching and uh, kind of uh, diverging across the whole city. And you see the shadow cast over the entire city of Brass as Vida looks up. The darkness passes overhead, and you can just see this glowing eye. What would Vida do, Kirsty? If she feels like there's a way her eye can connect with whatever being is controlling that storm, she, she would. She shout. She says him, under her breath, "Tell him to." I can feel him. He's there. She shouts no out. Revenge to be had here. She shouts out. Father. You're too late. There's nothing left for you here. And you see the light of her eye shine brightly. Uh, and this kind of like uh, thunderous uh, volley of noise seems to ripple through the cloud as uh, yellow lightning seems to kind of zip and uh, like almost percolate underneath the cloud. Uh, but then, Tilly, you'd be the first to notice the cloud starts almost contracting and the lightning starts to f go backwards. It's the most unnatural weather reaction you've ever seen. The, uh, the black cloud begins to get thicker and denser in the middle as these as it starts to swirl and turn like a cyclone but that's as that cyclone begins to form the, it starts to reach downward <coughs> after a couple of minutes you can see daylight starts to return to the edge of the city and the darkness and yellow lightnings uh, begins to coalesce 
uh, as this vortex in the middle of this circular platform on the roof of the charcoal fr throne. Um, I then want everybody to make a strength saving throw. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Uh, anyone who got less than 20 is knocked on their ass. Uh, as uh, all of this pressure, this force of nature is distilled into a massive strike. This shadowy humanoid figure appears at the base of this impact and um, the shadow begins to uh, kind of almost catch fire and as the fire kind of bursts over this humanoid body the shadow dissipates and you can see once more the cleansing flame Vida Viserion uh, uh, Noxus Viserion standing now eye to eye with his daughter both of their eyes flash yellow in recognition. Uh, Kirsty, do you feel confident in having this conversation as Vida? Ooh, uh, yeah. You needn't command me, daughter. I would follow you gladly. And he kneels. This is very different. Pardon? I said this is very different. You say there's no revenge to be had. You've dealt with Marak al Sedan. He's gone. Then For where as is. As long as I'm here. Then where is your mother? I'm not sure she's here. What do you mean? The Sultan was keeping her something. prisoner in his harem. How did you know? This seems a difficult question for him to answer. Is it something he's believed for so long? He can barely recall when his mind was changed. No, it had to be. She came here. Viconia. She needed my protection. She... She promised to stay. We'll look for her. Of course we... Of course we will, but... I think there is a possibility that she's not here. And I'm sorry for whatever that means to you. He st stands and looks up. In admiration of your strength and almost disbelief at your wisdom as Vida. And he puts his arm around you, his arms around you and embraces you. He 
he says softly in your ear. You need to stay here. Make sure that no retaliations are sought against the people of this city. You'd I was by myself, better. I would. Me? Yeah. If I was by myself, I would tell you where to go and I would disappear out of here, leave the plane. I have the Knights of the Ashen Palm and if they want to stay with me, then I'll stay here. They all rally behind Vida, ready to serve. He holds you tight one last time. I'll find her. <clears throat> T Tilly will pipe up before he kind of starts. Is he? Does it seem like he wants to leave? Yeah. Excuse me, Mister Noxus. You remember me? What is it, young one? You know, before you took the eye, we were all worried about how it's going to affect you. Can I ask how you're feeling now? Is this power having control over you? Or do you control it? When I left the fountains of creation in my new form, I had nothing but burning vengeance in my heart. And as I stretched over the city of brass from above, I saw it in a way I'd never seen it before. Smaller and more delicate. Filled with stories like Vida and I's. Spoken between the streets, in the shadows, between slaves and servants alike. My vengeance burned too brightly. And I'm only thankful that my much wiser daughter was able to resolve this matter in her own way before I made another grievous error. Worry not, young one, looking down at Tilly. I'm a force for balance. The thing that is most out of kilter seems to be because of the feelings that have weighed me down. The guilt, the denial. One day I'll return. But I'm not ready to rule. I'm not even ready to be a father. That's not true. Though, so, I think you can look for her with one eye. You don't need both. <laughs> the other eye will be keeping on you. The new one, I mean. I don't think you need it. It's 
you don't need that kind of temper, especially if you find her, especially if you find that she left for reasons that make you unhappy. It was Nate. A oh, persuasion sorry. check. He, you have a plus one, so roll a d twenty and add a plus one to this. Oh. I spent my life searching for this symbol. Freedom and rally against, rallying against injustice. There are better places that I could put it to use. And you have my word. If Viconia Duskrin is out there and she wants to see me, I won't be hard to find. And with that, you see the yellow eye glow, and he disappears into a cloud of ash that takes off on the wind. I think that's a good point to end the session. Uh, have we just managed to usurp another city? I guess so to some extent. But the 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 thing that really gets to me is that we set out to get an eye, found out there's two, and then can't bring either one back with us. <laughs> I was I was so ready. I had I really good plan, I think, in my head that uh, I had shared with Lucy already. Um, depending on how he was going to act, Tilly was going to cast regeneration on him and did uh, pull mm -hmm. a Nain on his eye. <gasps> I was ready uh. to do that. <laughs> uh, but, um, I mean, in that situation, uh, he's uh, he seems he seems in control and... Yeah, he didn't visit a fiery vengeance on the city of Brass. Yeah, that would have Vida been... Vida had the power to compel him to come down, and they had a rational conversation. Honestly, it's hard for me to imagine, given how, how many plates were being spun and how much risk there was, how that could have been resolved better. Yeah, we did. Oh, we been well then. <laughs> I thought, yeah, if... If you'd have made that other choice, Kirsty, about Vida and just pocketing the eye and take it, you know, we'll find out what it does later, then that could have been game over for some of you. When you said that there was a choice between the two and then, or maybe you were going to put it to a vote, I was like, oh my God, I hope that I get like the vote that swings it because that, this is what I know that she would do. Yeah. Well, so yeah, really yeah. happy. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I'm. Well, uh, thank you for coming in on Vida's arc because it's your character after yeah. all. And I, so curious, what would everybody vote if it, this was a vote, <laughs> Gareth? It's hard to be uh, objective I now. I was. I said it, hundred percent with Kirsty's decision. It's exactly you, what Vida would have said. done. He did say Vida's motivation completely. Yeah, I yeah. wanted her to do it as well. And you did as well. Yeah. And what about you, Lucy? Curious. Giselle didn't have an opinion. She was like with the crowd. We would, yeah. And you, Lucas? I think based what would Tilly on. Have done? I, I think based on the fact what kind of character Tilly is, and the fact that this thing literally bends someone else's will, you know, so dominates them, she would say, "Don't use it." Um, yeah. But in, in option. Yeah, she would go for that, but uh, it worked out for the best. And and uh, uh, right now, I mean, I think um, uh, there's there's some 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 role play that will come out of it. Um, and uh, with Vida uh, deciding what she's gonna do, it's it's pretty exciting, and she has the opportunity to make a lot of a lot of things a lot better if she wants to. And uh, she's not. Yeah. A, 
bad person. She she'd probably profit on that a little bit. Maybe do some stuff. I don't know. Is is you you we can. Vida sitting on the charcoal throne is just a cool fucking image. It's me. just it's just <laughs> insane. Imagine that when we need an ally in the future, we can fucking call upon the entire might of the fucking city of Brass if we want help. <laughs> would immediately be going, ooh, trade opportunities. Yeah, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, Giselle's got 25 grand for fronting up, being the face for Vida <laughs> and the capture. Yeah. Gun. We uh, got we got yeah. money from Balhota before in the session got before. Of yeah. gold as well in yeah. satchel. Did I tell you how much that was? No, I don't think so. I think you said like it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, uh, but we can deal with that next session. Uh, it's a bit late now, so. so we've got the money to pay back the Sultan, the, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. now got beneficial trade that we can set up with another city. Yeah, and maybe enough money to sweeten the deal so the prince of Najarim is not going to be too pissed about us not bringing back the eye. Um, you know, He's who knows? Buy some rings. Yeah, Jesus. Well, Are we going to do... Do you think we're going to do the sort of what happens next in as a little sort of narrative, I don't know, downtime? Or did you think that? Or are we just going to continue the session? Um, I... I think there's enough wiggle room to do it, yeah, to treat it as downtime next because we've reached the point of the story, like the narrative conclusion. But yeah, the logistics, have a think about what you'd want to do next over the coming like days and weeks and we can see what's achievable. Um, Lucy, uh, going forward, I actually wanted to go backwards. I actually wanted to take a little narrative break and establish Giselle a little bit prior to this adventure. That's okay. such a good idea. I love it. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to need you to do is have a... What level are you currently? Level... Um, <clears throat> 16... Yeah, 16. 16. Um, you can, I think you can make a copy of your character, can't you? Um, so make a copy, uh, and then what I'm going to do is we're going to do a level 14 adventure um, where uh, Giselle's backstory gets flushed out a little bit. Um, That's we'll, awesome. We'll discuss when to do it, whether we start that next session or whether there's other things people want to do prior to that, but... Uh, I'll set up a campaign page and talk about like characters that you could make, and if anybody wants to collaborate, uh, yeah, just let me know. But yeah, details to be confirmed. Sweet, awesome. Yeah. All right. Was there a controversial stat block that you were going to tell us about? Oh, uh, the Grand Sultan stat block. Uh, it, the Grand Sultan has a stat block from third edition. And there have been various interpretations about his fifth edition version. What is unanimously agreed, though, is that not only is he in a freak, but he also is a level twenty sorcerer. So, you combine the like innate powers of a grand freak with the ultimate amount of sorcerer training means he can do a lot of fucking shit. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but yeah, away? you did send him away. That's terrifying, and uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, all right, dudes, thanks so much. Sorry to keep you on us so later, uh, and I'll see you next time. All good. Thanks. See you guys. Bye bye.